It's a tax show, Jim, but not as we know it. Be a cheeky tit. And this is great banter. Well, good morning. Fucking freezing. Yeah, it's Josh, cold. you're wearing three coats? What are you wearing? All sorts of stuff. Oh my gosh, Simon, you're wearing like five and a half coats and a blanket on top. Is that a Snuggie? Yeah. I'm wow. wearing five Snuggies. You're wearing five Snuggies? What, do you got a pillow pet in the back? You never heard of that? It's a pillow, it's a pet, it's a pillow pet. You ever heard of that? Oh, I have. Wow. What's it's up? I'm pretty warm. That's nice. It's cold in there. Why is it so cold over there, Josh? Is, your, is it because your heart is cold? No, it's just an old wooden house. Oh. I like it. I have a heater, but I refuse to put it on. I just, I like, I, I used to be poor and I used to wrap myself in blankets and live in a sleeping bag. Um, so, and I miss those days. And also, <laughs> I'm preparing for the coming, uh, you know, winter of discontent where we can't afford electricity. I like uh, I like sleeping in the cold because you know you get under the blanket and stuff. I can't I can't stand sleeping in the heat, but sleeping when it's cold is nice. nice. Put your long johns on, some like plaid jammies or something nice like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I find when it's cold, I can always get warm with a blanket or a sleeping bag and five pairs of socks. But if it's really hot, there's just nothing you can do. Yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing at all. Nothing. Anyway, except, except just get naked with some ice. I remember in this in this apartment here, I used to in the summer when I had no AC, and also this summer when I had no AC, I would take ice packs, put them under my pillowcase, and in the morning you got yourself a nice little soft, warm ice pack. But you're never really hot throughout the night, which is really good. That's what I liked about it. It's a good idea. These are some hot tips. Yeah. With rising climate so anomalies. What? How that work? Been. What's this night? What? What? How come? I said, have you been? What'd you have for breakfast today? You seem you seem very uh very uh well well rested, but at the same time at the same time very uh very tired. Yeah, both. I'm right on the knife's edge. I've been working very hard. Uh, for breakfast, I had uh, two slices of toast, um, wheat toast with a uh, apricot jam and a raspberry jam. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's fun to have two different jams that spices up the morning. I also had a. What one do you have first? Uh, <laughs> ap apricot. I have the apricot first, and then I have the raspberry. And I had a cappuccino. I was sipping a cappuccino with frothy do you, milk. Do you uh, do you do you eat the one you want the most first, or do you save it? Because I'm a save it till last guy. I save the best for last always. Yeah, I don't know. When, when, often I'll do Vegemite and jam, and I'll do the the Vegemite first, the savory, and then have the sweet jam for the follow up, but. Yeah, with the jam, I don't know. I just, I just went for it. I think I just intuition, just, I just, just harness like the, the power of my ancestors and just rolled the dice and, bang, apricot first. Uh, didn't regret it. You know, it was fine. You know, was feeding my daughter at the same time, like trying to stuff fruit into her mouth and bits of mushrooms and stuff. So you know, it was a whole. It's like we all eat from a big trough. You know, it was this big table full of food and just all. Bleh. I remember Jack was cutting up all of this all these vegetables for the baby. It was, it was great to watch it. It made me want some of it. It made me miss those days when I could just, you know, be gu be just so gummy with my vegetables and just push on with my gums and the, like the, the squeeze them with pressure. I didn't have to bite. There was no stabbing. It was very peaceful back then. It was just squeezing them until they, until they just turn into even more mush. It's a baby's life sometimes. 
You wish mastication. I think that's a term, mastication, isn't it? The, the act of chewing. You must masticate yeah. the food at least like 25 times. But it sounds so much like masturbation. Yeah, that kind of reminded me of what it sounds like a little bit. Reminded me of that word. Yeah, it's a dangerous word to employ in a conversation, especially when you're talking about children. Oh, dude, not even, meant, not even to mention the school board. If you go into the school board or something, you ever been to a school board meeting? Me? No, not yet. Oh. I, I attended one as a child. No, no, I didn't. That was a school meeting, not a school board meeting. Oh, yeah, school board meeting is no funny business. Everybody's very serious at those things. Going through them. You're down there complaining about something. You don't have any children. Zoning. No, I went in I, one time in high school. It was the craziest thing. I transferred. I transferred. I had to move, and I transferred high schools in the middle of my high school uh, career, because that's what they call it. And it was uh, <laughs> they gave. I, I went to this school where I was at. The school had no uh, gym class, and so I transferred. Oh, uh, and they had no aquatics class, like teaching like a pool. So I transferred over to the school and I moved, and they had a pool class, but they didn't tell me that I needed it to graduate until my senior year, halfway through. So I ended up having to do uh, two gyms and a pool in my last year, which was Good Lord. outrageous because, I mean, meanwhile, everybody around me is getting home early because they don't have any credits left because they're seniors. And I'm, I'm going this is turning pool. into an untinning video. Uh, I they they just had me in the pool with all of these these fourteen year old boys, and I was seventeen. I mean, I was much older. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah, if you went to a school I board meeting, mate, and demanded like, that, that they let you into the the young boys pool. Well, it's just because everybody you take you take aquatics class when you're a freshman in that school, and I was a senior, and so it was fucked up. Um, but they, uh, school. I, I lived a bizarre night like me. Nice. I, I went to the school board and I wrote a big, I, I read a big, uh, essay about why they need to, um, drop my damn pool class. Cause I didn't want to take it. I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to draw an art class instead. But... Oh, I got confused. I thought you wanted to be in the pool. No, 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 no. I'm not lame. I can't, I don't even know how to swim. Why would I want to be in the pool? <laughs> That sounds horrific. Yeah, it's all yeah we, didn't, we didn't have a pool. Yeah, do you guys know Josh? Do you know how to swim? Yeah, I got my 10-meter uh, certificate like uh, a year before anyone in my class. Wait, wait, wait. Say Ooh. that again. You got your 10-meter certificate in swimming? My 10-meter swimming certificate a year before anyone in my class. I never heard stop, of it. Stop, stop bragging, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I also passed my cycling proficiency a year before as well. Oh my god! All right, making <laughs> it all feel like shit. Yeah, I I don't know any of those classes. I just know I had a two point six GPA, and that that uh I didn't get into this college that ever even all the stupid kids got into. It was a state school, and uh, my and it was just the only college I really applied to, and I didn't I didn't even get into it. But we had uh we didn't have like we had uh. You go, we, we learned to ride bikes at school, so. Oh, really? Yeah. I learned to ride my bike around the age of 11. Damn. Yeah. I was a bit Late of a life cyclist. Yeah, Simon, when did you learn how to ride a bike? Oh, uh, five or something? Four or five? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah not me. Yeah, I was early into it. You know, Tasmania, you know, we had to ride down there. Yeah. Go I think mine was three because it was before primary. It was before primary school, which I think is four. Yeah. Damn, you're, you're telling me, Gus, you're telling me you're riding down the goddamn roads of the Isle of Wight in a bike in a three? <laughs> no, no, on the school playground, just rounded in circles. When you're three years old? Yeah. <laughs> That's like actually a baby, though. It's such a child. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's I think I just. Uh, I don't know, I was naturally athletic and balanced. You should do baby Tedward where he's doing bike tricks on the playground. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. What are you unboxing there? PS3? Um, it's a, no, it's a, it's a um, like a TV stand. I'm getting a new TV oh. for the for the studio here. 
So I'm getting a big stand and, and more book storage as well. It'll it'll have it's more shelving. Wait, you're really gonna have a really big TV where you draw? No, no, I'm going to get rid of the smaller TV on the desk so I can have more art supplies and more room. And oh. my lamp won't always be in front of my computer. Cause I'm always peeping to do emails. I have to peep. I just, I oh. can't move the lamp. I just leave it there and just, just peep around it. It's, it's horribly oppressive. Um, yeah, yeah, that no, sounds horrible. Yeah, no, the work's going to be more clear and then there'll be a, a TV off to the left. And I can drag a beanbag over and it becomes like a, a gaming slash movie zone. So I, in between projects when I allow myself to have 48 hours of rest time, which is usually the maximum I allow myself, I can sit in my beanbag and just watch a movie. Now, this is the theory that I'm actually going to take a break in between projects and allow myself some downtime. I always... Well, why would you... So let me ask you this. So let me ask you this. You're telling me this about how you're trying to pace yourself and become more of like a human, like, and enjoy your life. But to me, that just sounds really lame. Lame. Yes. To me, the 19-year-old who's been making comics for two years, that just sounds lame. Yeah. Taking a break. Yeah, bro. Why would you cool. do that when you could just, when you could just, uh, when you could just not take a break? Now, I'm only, well, I'm only busting, I'm only busting chops here. It's just a big bag. I gotta, I gotta imbibe. Nate, I have to live as an artist. I need to, I need to sometimes see what the other artists are doing in film, dance, poetry. And you know, and assess what I'm doing. Do a do a full audit. Give myself forty eight hours for an audit <laughs> of what I'm doing. It's it's part of the whole process. It really is. It's part of the business. It's part of everything. It's all intrinsically linked. Yeah, two days is so short. My God. Well, I'll often say two weeks, but then I just I'm a workaholic, so I just get started. And, you know, after I finish this next book, the Werewolf Jones book, I'm starting on Meg's Coven and this other secret project that I'm really excited about. So yes. it's going to be hard to, like, you know, oh, I'll just take a couple of weeks off. But, you know, it's, I, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just want to get into it. Yeah, I mean, Meg's Coven, that's going to be, like, years of your life. Yes. Yeah. Somebody said, what the fuck? That's immature not to have break and enjoy life. Oh, I'm glad... Kind of you guys, you guys have the, the, the great smell of, uh, of, of sarcasm. I guess you guys just don't know that. You can't smell it. But I was, I was not being too serious on that. <laughs> yeah, it's, the mega chat is comedy to everybody watching. Like, this is not, you know, we should have a disclaimer, like, don't, don't get a big bug up your ass. And take yeah, Jesus seriously. Christ. These people. It's and I'm often... mad. Hey, and now I'm mad. Because these people are on a horse with two blunts, man. A high horse. <laughs> and they need to get off it because they come on here and they laugh. And then they, they, they choose not to laugh at something. And they choose to take it in and internalize it. You're crazy. You need some help. Better help. Yeah, better help. Check it out. Yeah. These people are out of their wits. And they'll learn one day, I think. It's better, it's better help the... Uh... I think I'm gay commercial. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. It's one of my favorite commercials on the YouTube. I, I love that she said, yeah, she's like, why does it, why do I care so much what everyone thinks about me? I think I'm gay. It's like, what? Why, why are those two things together? Like, what? It's almost like a oh, diss against gay she's people. She's finding like, out for the first time, maybe. It sounds to me like yeah. a diss. Like, you know, but it sounds like it's implying that gay people are very self-obsessed and they all care what people think of them. It's a very weird ad. I think mm. the, the ad itself needs therapy. Right. Yeah, one of my favourite ads on YouTube, hands down. Ne never skip it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, heard of, I, I heard of this website, YouTube. I heard of that. And I know you guys um, just uploaded the uh, How to Make a Zine so you guys are done with the Tedward split, and it's in your hands now. You're looking at it. You spent so much time. It's probably feeling amazing. It How is. Was... It we were on such a high, Nate. Yeah, was... yeah. We were on such a oh, high my... on, uh, when was it, Josh? Tuesday when we went to the to the, the Kinko's, the Staples. Yeah, yeah. Just the hot smell of the toner. And just, we felt so young, you know, because Josh and I are old men, as well documented, you know, and a lot of the critics of Manga Chat, or, you know, they're very ages, and always called Josh and I old men. But, you know, we truly felt like young men going to the, you know, just printing something so 
old fashionedly. I mean, we still worked from a stick in the digital thing. We weren't there with the yeah, yeah. mocked up paper. We didn't copy from the originals as I used to in the nineties. Like, you know, I would actually copy direct from the originals, which I think but, just makes it more pure and more honest. I, whenever I copy, I copy from the, I just print up a master of the double sided thing. I just copy that. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That, that swells my heart with joy hearing that. Oh my gosh, yeah. I yeah, love no, we're, we're and, and it's the Well, I'm sorry for being organized. Yeah, what are you, what, what are you sorry for? I, I liked it. You just it spat all the pages out in the right order. We didn't have to sort anything. It was yeah, easy. We, we, to collate we thought we'd be set up at the work table with like all the pages laid out and you take one from each stack and you build it up and collate you know and build up the stack and you get them around the wrong way and then you staple them like oh fuck like you know everything's backwards yeah. you unpick the staples redo it um yeah the, the trimming's not perfect because like i could i could trim around you know and get the edges like full bleed but then when you do fold it you do get this white still protrusions from the center sheets yeah. uh, which really bothers me like it shouldn't but this this kept That's me awake actually... all night last night i was so upset fanning i think they call it fanning right fanning probably is that a santoro term that i imagine it's actually so. really unfortunate you guys but are the mix have one online you probably won't have that right Oh, God, speaking of mix, Sam, God, we're waiting for the Werewolf Jones and Sons autumnal grievance spectacular. Uh -oh. I don't know if it's yeah. true, Josh. They shipped it today from the UK, you said? Yeah, and I checked, and uh, a couple of hours ago, it was in Swindon Airport. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we're fucked. Uh, yeah, yeah but at least we've got Tedwood. We've got 50 copies of Tedwood. Yeah, yeah. This is more exciting than Werewolf Jones anyway, because it's different. It's, you know, it's exciting. People love Tedwood, and I've drawn Tedward, you know, for half of it. I've done, you know, something different. It's, there's no witches or werewolves. So, so, so very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. It's a very half and half zine. It's uh, exactly half and half. It is Tedward. Nice it. little bonus in the back. No butt stuff. That's right. That's a drawing by me. That's Tedward. Yeah, no, we've got the got Nate Garcia pin up in there for, for Nate Garcia fans. All the kids out there that love their Nate Garcia, they can pick that up. Oh, oh, my, I'm my so wife. excited to read that. You guys have no idea. I can't believe it. I remember when you told me about it for the first time on this stream. I was like this for three minutes. I came four times. My wife read it, who is the publicist for Fantagraphics Books. Full disclosure. I was playing video games and she read it in the background. And I felt very distracted and uncomfortable because I hate when people read my work near me. And she laughed numerous times during oh, Josh's okay, good, trip. Okay. And, no, the start of the book, she laughed at all Josh's ones. Then finished it, obviously. Like, oh, that was good. Like, Josh's story was good. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Like that. And then she proceeded oh, to read great. my 11-page story in complete silence and then closed the book and said, all right, I'm going to go have a shower. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I don't you know. You made her want to get clean. That's really unfortunate stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just hard for her to read my work, maybe. Like, she hasn't read the last few Megan Mog books. She's too close to it. It's too weird. And I don't know. What do you mean by that? Mm. What do you mean by that? Well, oh, that's warm my heart, though. I'm so happy Jack liked uh, my heart. Like I, I, I don't know. If I get to know someone, I care less about their art. It's like if I really, I'm obsessed with someone, I love their art, and I become friends with um, them, I start to care less because it's just like, oh, I'm just friends with them. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not like a rabid fan anymore. I'm just their friend. Yeah, that's right. Know. That's how I felt when I became, Simon, when I became friends with you, I came home. And I, I threw away all your books. It was yeah. like, I don't even give a fuck Yeah, yeah give a fuck. It was really disappointing for you. And, you know, it's like, you I know. threw away, I threw away, this is the order. I threw them away. And I threw away <laughs> Mega Hex. Um, nice. And then I wanted to throw away Crisis Zone for, after that. Mm. But I was waiting because I pre-ordered Crisis Zone. I still need to wait to get in the mail for me and throw it away. <laughs> um, and then I got, I bought all the zines in order and I threw each one away. I threw one away each week and I was like savoring it. It was great. It's honestly one of the best moments in comics for me. Are you so planning on unmemorizing all that trivia, Nate? <laughs> uh, unmemorizing all the trivia? What do you mean by that question? <laughs> you should elaborate on that. I'm confused. Nate has a very good memory and has read a few of my interviews and can finish all my anecdotes. But when we, <laughs> if I try to tell an anecdote to a group of people and Nate just cuts in and says the ending, he, he knows them. And he has a memory like a, like a bloody horse. Yeah, yeah. Memory like a bird is what they tell me. But, um, my memory is so bad, I keep, uh, when coloring this Werewolf Jones book, I keep getting 
Switch the shorts. Jackson and Diesel, switch the shorts. <laughs> yeah, so easy way to remember, Josh, is that the, the torn off, like, jagged shorts on Diesel, they like, cut off jean shorts. So if you see yeah, the jagged yeah. Lisa Simpson edge, the blue jean short. If you see a hem, red. Nate, what are you working on? I'm working on, uh, right now, I'm working on a book of paintings of these, which actually I should say now, I should, I'm having these prints here, permanent damage of uh, of this wonderful um, Peggy here. Is that what's out in my garage? Um, No, actually, no. I used to know this. I've got I, three boxes, three boxes in the garage from you. Yeah, I, those are probably books. Um, what should I know? Sure. I'm not sure what it is, to be honest with you. There's, but... there's a box, there's a heavy box, there's a box of coasters, and there's like a poster tube with no caps on the end. It's just open. It's but... open? I put caps and taped them. Well, it was caps, ca thing. the caps came off. The, the posters seem good. There doesn't seem to be any damage around the rim. I think you're all right. All right, good. I'm worried about that rim damage. Literally, I was thinking that. But uh, uh, I had all these 11 by 14 prints made of Peggy here, and... Um, I had them sent to you, and then I got an email. Because Mixed Hem does this thing, man. I noticed them. I, I noticed they do this. They think they're slick. They're going to tell me. They're going to halt the order and say, we really think uh, this would look better with uh, this thing that costs way more money. Do you want this? And then you have to actually like go into the website, sign in, and confirm that you don't want it. And like you didn't have to ask me if I wanted that. I saw the option there. I know it costs more money. Um, I, but they, I, they, like, they stopped the order every time and I didn't see the email and so now it's like um, it's going to be getting to your house on the day after Christmas so Jesus yeah, yeah. it's tough it's rough dealing with these mix and bastards you know they do they, they yeah. print good product cheap and they ship it to you it's you know well, I mean, prices, I, honestly but, this was poor planning on my part time wise they're a fabulous uh, company I think uh, they seem to have fucked us. I mean, I think they told us the books were going to ship a bit earlier than they are. Isn't that right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, no, they're fucked. Yeah, they're okay. completely fucked. It's pack of cunts, that's what I say. Mix them. It can still get there on the third if it, like, fits the time frame they said it's going to, but we'll, well see. There's mail on Saturday as well. I mean, it could get delivered on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, that. What if you can uh, intercept the package? Oh, no. But what we're talking about here, Manga Chat viewers... We are talking about the permanent damage zine fair at uh, the Permanent Records Roadhouse this Sunday, the 4th of December. Nate's flying in. Jasper Jubinville, Anna Highfish, the German, will be there. Johnny Ryan, yeah. I believe. And numerous other local cartoonists uh, all hawking their paper goods. It might rain, but the organiser, Keenan Keller, is, I, I hear, scrambling around trying to get some tarps and some umbrellas for us. So, well, that's very uh, dirty. Know, so we need to keep our, our paper goods dry, you know. Well, I was saying yesterday, what I might do is have all my books under the table mm. and uh, have a little laminated menu on the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's like in Amsterdam, yeah, when you go into a hash bar, you have to like press a button and the menu lights up. We could have one of those, it's like a hash bar. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'd uh, love to Lots of creepy Americans in leather jackets hanging around that look like they want to rape you. Yeah. But I actually went and I got the I got more made last minute at the local campus copy center, Triple C. Hey! Oh, no. And oh, so I'll, I'll have 50 and they're signed and numbered uh, on Sunday in December. I'll have all my books too. I'll have Muscle Horse, which is out of print. Um, and I'll have a bunch of new coasters and a really big poster for sale too. So it'll be stocked up. Yeah, Sorry. Josh and I. Josh and I got the Tedwood split. We've hopefully got the uh, new Werewolf Jones split scene. Two done. books, brand new. We've been hard at work. Two books. You got the Werewolf Jones and the Tedwood, both split books. Best of both worlds. It's the best of both worlds special. Something yeah, really is. Yeah. And no, you'll really, have Blue Ambition too, which is brand new as well. We'll have a small stack of Blue Ambitions. I'll have some Crisis Zones. I'll have Spanish Crisis Zones um, for the Whoa. Spanish speakers of the Los Angeles area. I'll have flags, uh, factory second in perfect flags. I've got a single thong, a Werewolf Jones thong, just one. So getting really? this, I, th I think it's a small, maybe, uh, suitable for children. Um, 
Yeah, no, Josh has got small T-shirts, speaking of suitable for children. He's only got small power wash T-shirts left. Yeah, two small T-shirts. So we've got shirts and thongs for children over at the Pettinger Hanselman table. Uh, it's going to be a fucking banger. Permanent Records Roadhouse. I believe it starts at midday. I must. I was remiss in saying that it does start at midday. It runs until 10, but I'm fucking off at 5. Um, and the bands, there's bands which confusingly start at 2 during the zine fair uh, we'll see how that works it may rain and there'll be punk music blaring during your transactions but let's see how it all goes it's going to be really great I, I couldn't be more excited i mean you know you're flying over for it nate i mean how you know just it's the time of my life it. i'm gonna see a palm tree again that'd be cool Staying at our house on uh saturday night uh, yeah. where we would get around the fire pit have a chin wag have a you know gossip uh it's gonna be great yeah, I'll show you my kneecaps. You don't see that on here. Oh, we've got, to, we've got to figure out what we're doing on Monday as well. Uh, last time we all went to Six Flags, uh, Magic Mountain. Double M, yeah. But what, do we do we try and do something like that again, or do we keep it simple and we can just go to the dive bar and play pool all day and get drunk? don't know. I, I, say, we go yeah. in, I, I say we go in a big, 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 big field, and we all get naked and we get... We get one. Uh, we get one bottle of grape juice, and we just drink it really slow <laughs> for eight hours together in a circle. Are we on ayahuasca during this scenario or something? Well, no. I I I think we should try this thing where we do like uh, silent periods of nudity and grape juice. So we'll not talk for three hours in the field, sip the grape juice slow, and then we'll talk for three hours straight, and then we'll just go home. That sounds like a nice purity ritual or something. This does sound quite nice. I mean, it's just, uh, you gotta keep me around side for these ideas. I, got I, think I, I, I vote the field and the single bottle of grape juice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Deep, we are not made of money here. We, we will Disneyland. be after Sunday. I, see, I, I don't want to go to Disneyland because I'm going on my birthday with my wife. So, you know, I want Disneyland to be like a romance trip for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go with you fucking jablonis. I mean, uh, Mickey, uh, you, you don't want to see Mickey unless uh, unless it's going to be romantic, obviously. It's, it's going to be Jasper the whole time, like, ah, pull my finger, ho, ho, and going on about his fruit bowls that he eats. So. Mate, someone said they saw you at Bartram's Garden. Do you know what that is? What does it say? I, 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 someone said I saw Nate at Bartram's Garden flying a kite at night. I didn't say hi, <laughs> though. I don't like these rumors. This is the thing. I, this is a this is a verbal assault on my character. I would never do that. Flying a kite at a, night. What a freak. That's just a Simpsons reference. I think there's something so unwholesome about flying a kite at night. I think that's the line. They're just stealing from the Simpsons. I shouldn't talk. I've been accused of being a joke thief. You know, in the recent recent past, history, future, present. Well, I mean, it's you're only you're 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 being fed a sitcom sitcom. Man. Comedy and comics your whole life, they're going to be reused somehow, rehashed. It's not always so, conscious. Sometimes I purposely do it. Like in Megan Mog, sometimes they say something and it's like, you know, in quote marks. Right. And it's because they are literally just quoting a TV show. I find right. it realistic writing because in real life, as this commenter just did, they've just used a joke from something they've seen on television. Perhaps decades ago, they think they can get away with it and no one's going to call them out. Yeah, it happens. Oh, I, love to, I love to do that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's real life in regards to the writing thing. Like, it's, I just think it's so realistic to just have characters that just say things from TV. That's good. That's good writing. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. I put Jimmy Fallon in my last comic because uh, I'm not really a fan. No, I'm not a fan either. I'm going to go out. You know, I'm not. I don't like to disparage people online, but I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm not a big Jimmy Fallon fan. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Just you know. Not a big I don't fan. like when people make it their whole personality because it's very lame. Uh, because Jimmy Fallon is not someone you need to have a vicious kind of malice towards. It's just an, it's it's just very mid. But yeah, I'm a big James Corden guy. No way, Josh. <laughs> Are you being serious? He's so no. charming. No, Josh and I love carpool karaoke, and we love uh, what Gavin and Stacey. We just had a big Gavin and Stacey mm -hmm. watchathon last week. Uh, oh love God, it. Watch-a-thon. No, uh, yeah, I don't like James <coughs> Corden. There's a there's an Elmo or Ernie in Sesame Street video I watch with my my kid, and I have to skip it because it's got James Corden singing Rubber Ducky, and he just really looks like a corpulent pedophile. 
Like Gosh, that's something... so untasteful. That's really bad. There's just something upsetting about him holding this little ducky and like singing this coy, cute voice like Waba Ducky. And it's just, oh my God, I want to vomit. <laughs> Who's supposed to watch that? Like uh, adults who have crushes on them, wine moms who say have they, they have shirts. They say have they have the shirts that say "Will run for wine" and they're watching James Corden with a glass it's, of wine. It's really weird. There's a toothbrushing one as well. Like we'll watch this Elmo toothbrushing video, and it's all just random families and kids, and then suddenly just like uh, Holly from The Office. If you've seen The American Office, like Michael Scott's love interest, like just the actress that plays Holly is just suddenly there, like brushing her teeth for like two seconds amidst all these randos. And, and then I think Nicole Kidman pops up as well. It's like, it's really just very random. Like, you know. Gosh, this is what's left of American pop culture, I guess. So. Just random toothbrushing. So I don't know. Just... It's falling apart. There's, there's a weird guy in there, like an older gentleman wearing like a really dorky hat. And he's, he's like going like this, like left to right. And like, he's just holding the brush and like moving his face and trying to be like all cool and stuff. And, I can tell he's someone famous, but I don't know who. And there's just no way to Google it. Like, man with dorky hat in Elmo tooth video. Like, who? Yeah, you're never uh, you know. finding that. No, no. I'll just, I'll just never know. But it irritates me. I watch this thing every day, and it just burns me up. And again, I can't sleep at night. It's like, who is this, this man? <laughs> looks like the singer from the B-52s or something, but it's not. It's not him. But I don't know. Anyway, whatever. A bit of a tangent there. Sorry. Oh, uh, that's never happened on this yeah, program. No, we're, not, we're not known for our tangents on Manga Chat. Uh, what, yeah. what did you have for breakfast, uh, you guys? I feel only it's only fair you asked me what I had for breakfast, and I talked about my toast in length. Does anyone else want to talk about their breakfast? I had a kind bar. <laughs> of course, you fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. Uh... <laughs> I had a kind bar and then some salt and vinegar crisps. Oh, it's so British. <laughs> Nothing to wash it down, though. That sounds very, uh, how do you say, dry. Oh. You're right, it is British. Drill. God, Jesus Christ. I need a drill and a pencil for this thing I'm building. Fuck off. Well, you can't do that now. Well, I can just go get my drill. <laughs> well, you should, br you should bring a... Uh... Bring everybody along and we'll, we'll, we'll meet the toolbox with you. No, no, there's people out there and stuff going on. Um, I was going to say, uh, Josh, that's, that's a very brutal breakfast. It sounds like needles in the throat, but I had one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in my whole life today. Really? I have to be honest. Have to be honest. In this great American city, Philadelphia, that I live in here, they have a little thing called Christmas Village, man. I'm fucking stuck in your hell now, Simon. Sorry, what? And they have... Because I recognize him, but I don't know who the hell that is. Oh, you found it. Yes. Who is it? God, sorry, Nate. Josh has just cut you off. He's gone in the rabbit hole on the uh, Sesame Street toothbrushing video. I've yeah. seen him in loads of stuff. Someone in the comments tell us who that is. Who's the irritating me? Play it, Josh, for a second so he does a little wiggle thing. Cool and like, look at me, look how I brush my teeth. Also, Bruno Mars is at the beginning. Yeah, no, I saw Bruno Mars in there. Look at him, what a dickhead. Oh, Fuck oh. off. Someone in the comments tell us who that is. He's probably a big fan. Right, Josh, before, I, before I was so rudely, uh, before you pillaged my conversation just now, I was yeah, sorry, uh, mate. Terrible. Um, that, uh, I had one of the best breakfasts I've ever, I've ever had. Is it this place, Christmas Village in Philadelphia, and it's in City Hall? They have all mm. of these Irish uh, people because they need money too, and they have all these little shacks where they sell these crazy stuff. I had I had a uh, a, a uh, sauerkraut bratwurst. Sorry, what? Mushrooms. It's Niles from Fraser. Mushrooms, not mushrooms. Um. um uh, mustard and sauerkraut and a diet cola. <laughs> Sorry, no, you've just been interrupted again. It was, my, well, Jack, I, don't, I don't think that's Niles. He says it's, uh, David, it's, I don't know if it's David Hyde Pierce, is it? Well, everyone go check it out. Uh, Elmo toothbrushing song on YouTube. Everyone check it out. What's what's the second mark there? Where, where can they see it, Josh? It's just a Sesame Street healthy teeth, healthy me 
uh, brushy brush PSA. Yeah. I'm so glad that this is this is uh, <laughs> this is this is crazy news. Wait, I think that might be him. Really? I don't know. Anyway, for the people that were listening, the sausage was great. It was brown, mustard, big roll, toasted, diet cola. That's what I had. And diet cola? Uh, yes. It's him. That's crazy. It does not, that does not look enough like him for it to be him, but it is him. He does look different in, in real. Is, what do you mean it is him? How do you know? Is it on IMBD? Yeah, yeah. What, it actually is? Yeah, it's David Hyde Pierce. I feel like you would look so much older, to be honest oh, with you. I, I love Frazier and David Hyde Pierce. I, I feel terrible for saying I thought he was a dickhead. Yeah, I'm a big Frazier head. I'm, that's, that's quite, quite Josh, a nice remember, answer. I'm pleased with that. Josh, do you remember uh, watching Frazier for the first time in Seattle? That, that was dying. That was the funniest. Three it wasn't the first time for me, but I'd show, I was showing you it for the first time, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Oh, it's a great show, Nate. I was I was dying laughing. The writing is phenomenal. Oh, it is the, the farce, the some of the the best uh, mainstream farce on American television. Oh yeah, the, 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 the capers that those Crane boys get up to. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just so they're just so rich, you know. They're probably, and that is the that's... most well trained dog in television history. That dog, that dog is great. A lot of uh, a lot of obedience in the eyes of that pup. He's a good boy. But yes, um, this is a classic episode today. No guest today because oh, all of our guests keep dying; they keep passing away. Well, I'm gonna put David Hyde Pierce in the thumbnail. So, really? No, put put uh, put yay. Uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Winters <laughs> in the in the thumbnail. Josh, try and get us some views. And Alex Jones. Yes. Oh my God. What's going on? Jesus. <laughs> there Jesus. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the comedy video he was doing with the with the little. Burr, 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 burr. He had the little net. He had a Yahoo and a net. Oh, oh, oh who are you talking about? Kanye went on Alex Oh, I just Jones. got that. I just got that. It was Net and Yahoo. Oh, yeah, my. Net and It was so fucking lame. Kanye went on the Alex Jones show and he was making fun of Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, with a, a, a net, like a comedy net, and a, and a Yahoo drink. Net and Yahoo. And he was doing funny voices, and like like puppets. It was it wearing a, a Belengensia Belen, 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 or whatever mask. What is it? Belen, oh, Balenciaga. That's it. The, the pedo... Uh, brand um yeah he's he's lost it it was it was amazing i didn't know anything about this i didn't hear this this is crazy this happened what was like he an saying? hour ago or something oh he, he, oh man i don't even want to discuss what he said it was oh, beyond exactly. beyond the pale like it was just like it's it was nuts um, i've been i've been walking around christmas village eating sausages all day i'm not hearing about you know uh anti-Semitic I, rageful rants. I went on to Twitter just for a minute. I, I've been lettering all morning. I've, I've, I've cut and ruled up 15 pages and lettered them all. They're ready to start penciling once I oh finish this cabinet. But uh, I just small. checked Twitter for a second and it's just like, oh my God, like, what's happening? Anyway, so what, check so it out on your own time. 15 pages of what? What is that? I saw you, the, they're cut up real small, so you're working small again. You're not just doing the small pages for the Tedward split. No, I'm working small again. I The Tedward stuff, I was going real slow and I was getting like a page or two a day done. And then I, I went back to small and I got I penciled nine, nine pages in a day and I inked like seven or eight or so. I can't remember. It was, I was wow. blowing through it. But yeah. This is more Werewolf Jones stuff. This is for the, the, the summer fun annual hardback edition next year from Fanta that me and Josh are putting together. He's coloring stuff. He's coloring it all. Um, I'm That's it up. This is a big final chapter. There's a, you know, yeah, you go finish the book off with a book exclusive, like, you know, big final chapter. I, I really um, enjoyed the cover. I think that's one of the funnier Megan Mog covers. It's like every, oh, uh, I love it. every opportunity for a laugh in that, in that book cover, there's something there. It's so great. Like the dick in front of a uh, drinking <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. Why no, do you yeah. know? Do that. It's why, like it's just to get there's a penis on the cover, like you know. But it could be a microphone why? or something. You don't know what it is. I mean, people can say, "Oh, it's the penis on the front cover of the book." No, it's not. 
yeah, I was gonna say, why'd you do that? Because that's like not. I didn't. I don't know. I it could be a teddy bear's paw. It could be anything. Exactly. It looks like a teddy's paw with like a purple paw, like a flesh-colored arm and a purple paw. Yeah. It's just funny. It'll be in Barnes and Noble. It'll it'll be in all the bookstores. It's you know. It'll, it'll be in Waterstones. Exactly. It's funny. I'm so I'm so thoroughly excited. I saw the um the uh, Amazon uh, preview of it, and I wish. I wish it, it looked more like a hardcover because it, it really is going to be hardcover, but the, 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 the picture looks so like the right. cover looks like the same. Yeah. It, it's those 3d mock-ups. They just plaster the, the, the cover onto like a stock block thing. I, I hate those 3d covers. Every time it's like, Oh God, I have to design the spine now, like a year before the book comes out for the 3d model on Amazon. It's like, can we just, I don't think any other publisher does the 3D covers. Sometimes, you know, it's all right to look at them like, ooh, that's an exciting spine. But, you know, overall, I, I can't stand it. Um, but, yeah, no, it is a hardcover. Um, it's going to have a reversible jacket. So you've got the petinger side or the no handsome way. side. Yeah, double-sided jacket. Um, this is so Josh can show the book to his mother and, like, he can flip the jacket around and go, look, it's my book with fanographics. I've done the cover. <laughs> Yeah, but all the all, all the pictures are not that cover at all. Well, the the main cover will be the A cover will be the handsome cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a sad fact of, you know. Isn't this what broke up the, the industry? Beatles? John Lennon never got the A sides after a while. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I can see Josh and I getting in huge fights down the line like next year when we're at yeah. Comic Con like, you know. Yeah, like why is my name always listed second? Like, no. oh, I'll be walking around Barnes and Noble switching the covers around. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I live next, I, I live close to one that's uh, still open, and, and uh, I, I I'll switch them for you, Josh. Uh, no, but that's exciting though because I I, I I actually love that. I've never heard of that before, or had a book that did that, and I can I, like yeah. like every six months I'll change it so I can like. Yes. It's probably commonplace. I've stolen the idea from a Lemony Snicket book. You know, those uh, Daniel Handler, Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events, children's books. Of course, they were the rage of my own. Wasn't, um, wasn't Seth doing some Lemony Snicket's covers for a while? I think he was perhaps, the paperbacks. But, but yeah, the original hardbacks, there was like a weird offshoot, like case file kind of book. Uh, and uh, yeah, it had a, a double-sided cover. I used to work in the children's books uh, department at Waterstones, so I know, you know, I know some of the popular children's books. But I was always quite taken by this double-sided. Yeah, you had like the gloomy side or the happy. You could like the, the joke was you put the the fake happy side on, so it looked like a happy book, but really it was a depressing, horrible book. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, good gimmick. I, I've you know stolen it uh, fifteen years later. Probably. I wonder, is it even really that much more expensive to do that? I feel like that'd be so cool if more uh, books would do that. Well, the problem gonna, is, also, that gives you the chance to do more artwork on the actual cover of the book underneath the jacket. Are you well, going to do got that? A, we've got a very funny joke planned for the actual hardback shell behind the jacket. We're not going to oh. give it away. So let me just tell you, Frank Santoro is going to—he's going to bloody love it. Oh my gosh, I'm so fucking stoked for that. That's um, cool. Yeah. No. So the problem with the jackets, though, Nate, on a serious note. Um, Publishers don't like them because um, you get a lot of sent back books like Waterstones or Barnes and Noble get all their books and they, they open them like, oh, these jackets are ripped. Oh, yeah, shipping. it's so easy to rip them, yeah. <laughs> and customers will destroy the jacket. Some meaty poured big pink Shrek of a customer will come in and manhandle the books with their sweaty repellent sausage fingers, just finger banging all the books and they tear it up and then they're like, oh, we've got to send these back. And then Mr. Reynolds at Fanographics is like, Curse of the you just had to impress your mother, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, uh, they don't like them, but, you know, Eric said, for you, look, you know, we'll do the jacket. Um, you know, it's nice because it's like book number seven or something with the publisher. So I guess they, you know, they allow me to do something a bit risky. Um, yeah. I let them slide a bit. That's good. We're trying to think of other gimmicks as well, like, uh, you know, Prismatic shit, die cut. Never done die cut yet. You know, that could be fun. I've done the prisms. Uh, you know, I've done the gold stamping. I've done the colored edges. I'd like to do pictures on the edges. If there was a book thick enough, you know, you can like the Body World book by Dash Shaw in old yes. ink. It says like Body World along the paper. 
And yeah, I, I've always but, wanted to do that. If I ever, if I would ever have a book with a spine, which I probably will one day, I, I want to put cow print. Oh, um, that is beautiful. That's, I'd like that's, to get it to be like pink cow print too, pink and white. That's beautiful. Yeah, I've seen some lovely books recently. It's like images that wrap around, or there's that Jim Woodring book, uh, the Gonad one. Um, very long title with Gonad in it. I forget the exact title, but very rainbow, like a real rainbow effect running across. They really heavily saturated the paper in these neon inks, and it's really shown through and a yeah, beautiful gradient. Lovely. Yeah, that's amazing. I've that's never... why I hate digital comics. Fuck digital comics. I love all this design stuff. I love designing a product. I love designing a book. I can't stand these Gumroad cunts. Oh, I'll give you a dollar on Itchio or Gumroad and I'll send you a shit. Yeah. I mean, Josh is doing it. No, I don't want to denigrate you, Josh. You're selling. There's a place for it. You know, you know, I'm obviously not saying people shouldn't sell PDFs of their work, but I, you know, far prefer, you know, designing physical products. I, I never want that to die. I, I never want Webtoon to become too ubiquitous. It never will, you know. Uh, people like to do this with their books. They like to eat a hamburger, get 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 a hamburger, get some soda pop or something, yeah. man. Just bend it back. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of fetishes out there that will continue to fetishize the, the physical medium. A lot of paper fetishists just want to touch the paper, and you know. Look at all the ways you can fold this. You can make your own story and just fold each panel over another one. Make your you own. Know, story. This this John Chandler book here. This is like, this is like a shiny cover and. A, there's lovely black edging in here and gold stamping on there that John's worth from, from, from Breakdown Press. We had Tom Oldham on the show a few weeks ago, remember? Yeah, that's great. This is one of the books that's we nice. talked about. Tom sent me the, the John's Worth. It's, it's a beautiful edition. It smells great. Oh, God, it smells good. The, the Yokoyama's nice as well. It's uh, very, very rich colors. Very avant-garde Yokoyama book. This is the manga. We're talking about manga for 30 seconds. This is some avant-garde manga by Yuichi Yoko. That is Yama, nice. Published by Breakdown Press. Nice design by Sean Philip Breton from the uh, the Lagon Collective. I believe the new the new Lagon is about to come out. Uh, Plane, I believe it's called. For, for viewers not in the know, um, Lagon is a avant-garde uh, Ponzi French anthology. Uh, very beautiful Rizo books. That's the first one, and that's the fifth one, I think. It's, Second, third, big ones. Uh, beautifully printed work, plastic covers. This one's all printed with like fruit dye, so it smells like fruit. Uh, it's kind of sticky. Does it still Dude. smell like that? Yeah, no, it smells great. Um, wow. But yeah, the, these are the new one, number number six, is coming out uh, in a, in a, like a week or something, I think. But beautiful. You probably can't see on through the phone, but beautiful colors in here. Like the the, the colors just pop. Uh, very artsy, avant-garde sorts of works. Oh, there's CF there. Some computery stuff. There's a Margot Ferrick. Uh, Margot Ferrick. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful colours. So, you know, be, be, be informed. Be in the know. One is dropping you know, in a week or something. I, I love this stuff. This book is just, like, it's just such a lovely wow. thing. It just smells, it still smells like fruit. It's really sticky and it's, it stinks of fruit. Um, but they're, they're, you know they're lovely, weird comics to have on your uh, on your shelf. You know, if someone comes over and they're a bit drunk or high or something, it's like have a look at this, you dumb bastard, and it'll just blow <laughs> their fucking mind. They'll just be like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, you know, it's just yeah, it's, there's lots of new stuff in there. I just I love them. Just lots of new, weird visuals, things I'd never think of. I'm such a meat and potatoes artist that it just. New, new visual forms. Most of it's a bunch of wank, to be honest, but smells good. Mm. I love the uh, belly cover on that, or uh, belly band. Yeah, it's got a big wrap out, a big poster that folds out. They're, they're, they're doing all sorts of weird stuff. They're, they're the guys that have done like a balsa wood laser etched books. It's like a, it's a book on on wood. Oh my gosh, I would hate that to be honest. Look at this. It's, it's made of wood. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's, like, it's like it's like you know it's got a nice taped up spine and it's a a laser etched book on wood oh whoa yeah, beautiful beautiful no no story or anything you know but just a bunch of like you know post fort thunder drawings but you know it's very nice it's cool that it's laser I'll, that's i was thinking it would be uh it would just be like um 
I still try something. Yeah, but goes to Angle M in the FOF area, the uh, the F off uh, offshoot festival area. If you go to Angle M, that's the best area, the FOF, where you find all the wooden books. Yeah. Never seen a wooden book. Yeah, you have now. You have now, haven't you? I think it's where is it? It's also at the the Fof uh, at the Ang Angle M where I found this uh, triangular book. Oh yes, I saw that on the beanbag. I was sitting yeah. on that beanbag looking at that. Jazz it's, a tr it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, full of artsy wank once again, just doodles and stuff. A bunch of hippies, but you know, the form of that is beautiful. It's triangular. Yeah. That is a cool one. I'll put that on the on the on my triangle bookshelf with all of my exactly. with all of my other triangle books. Josh, you never seen a triangle book like that? That's the first one. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, you know, it must be a bit of a shit to get those made. I thought, thought Risograph was horrible and complicated and, you know, they try making a triangular book. Where the hell do you get that done? Uh, no, I can't even make a PDF. Like, I can't even do, I can't even figure out full bleed. I always uh, pay with my one friend, Mark Wagner. He's watching to do it. And he's always so nice and does it for me. Yeah, I'm terrible with it. I hate computers and all the technical side of it. It's horrible. I enjoy it. Well, I'm glad you do. It helps with that. You know, I've been working together on projects. So it's nice that you, you you can talk to the printers and stuff. Yeah. I mean, do you think you're still going to color the World Jones book with Josh? Or do you think, like, because you were saying you were thinking you might get a tablet for it and do it yourself and run a tablet? It's time crunch. We've abandoned that plan. You know, Josh is. Yeah, color. I think I'm just going to color the thing and then. Uh... Simon's going to add like a lot of the extra pages and just split the labor up that way. Yeah. So it means that we'll have an uneven balance of material, but you know, still an even workload. So uh, we just we're five weeks out now, deadline wise. So we just have to fucking hustle and get it fucking done. Yeah. Even money. That's what counts. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No. Oh yeah, Josh. The French contract seems all sorted out. I'm going to uh, get. Uh, the agency to forward that to you so you can check out the contract. Oh, nice. Yeah, it all looks good. You know, business, business, love, business. Love those Frenchies. Yep. Oh, okay. Jay Webb's Josh, the shark fish, you made it. That's good. When you're signing these contracts, Josh, do you print them out, sign them, and scan them? And no, I use, uh, it's funny you say that, Nate. Uh, Actually, I use a, a little program called DocuSign. I don't know if oh, you've heard of it. Have you heard of it? This sounds Have you heard of DocuSign, Nate? <laughs> this sounds so fake, dude. I use EchoSign. I just get sent like digital contracts and I just like sign them digitally. Huh. I was trying to do a little DocuSign commercial, but yeah, I, I guess know, if we're just going to name I, rival companies, we're never going to get sponsored. I'm doing an ad for EchoSign. <laughs> Echo, echo, echo. Sign. Yeah, never. Oh, this is a nice docu sign. You never know who they're donating to, Josh. You never know who you're who you're um, helping. You could be helping the wrong guy, man. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Josh, what are you gonna have at the uh, permanent damage um, show in Los Angeles, December fourth, this Sunday? These. Are you gonna have any of the uh, big old posters of the uh, domestic violence of the girl smashing the guy's head with a glass? <laughs> yeah, I got that one. I got two <laughs> prints. T-shirts and comics, and some leftover. Did I hear and dot dot dot? Now you don't get to be rude to people. This holographic time. stickers. Oh, holo stickers. Are you going to rudely sell them to people, Josh? Or are you going to be polite this time? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I don't know. It depends what what time of the day it is. How long <laughs> I've been sat down. 
They'll, they'll, you'll have such a nice customer who will come up and say, oh my gosh, I've loved your comics since, since, since I, I, I've been loving your comics for so long. And they start crying and they say, Josh, you're the reason I wake up in the morning, the sun rises and sets with you. Your comics make me feel some type of way I never felt my whole life. And Josh says, Josh says to them, Josh says to them, all right. And they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it was. That's exactly why the person thought I was rude because I did just go, all right. Uh, he's British. You people have to understand that Josh is British. He's from the Isle of Wight. Oh my gosh! I know. All right, it has so many meanings. They come up to me, man. They start crying and they say, and and rightfully so. They come, up, they come crying and they say, uh, "Thank you, Josh, Josh. I thought he was so nice. I, I mean, I love this guy for so long. And uh, is he having a bad day?" I say, "You didn't know." I say, "No. He was born in the Isle of Wight. He, he, he didn't go into a restaurant until he was 23, or see the color blue until he was 26." <laughs> I what was 23 the first time I went to a restaurant. You're not wrong there. And so you have to go. You have to go into these things with a little bit of more courtesy and empathy, and understand the context of the situation. Josh, kind of being, kind of being culturally wrong. insensitive in a way. These fucking people that are getting mad at Josh for being a bit British. <laughs> like, just you don't. You, you obviously don't understand. You've not travelled. You don't know how British people are. You fucking American scum. This is what he has to deal with in the public. He has to deal with the public. It's 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 a blessing and a curse. A double edged spoon. Yeah, fucking Americans. They're dog shit, aren't they, Josh? Yeah, yeah. Jay Webster Sharp says she didn't have mayonnaise until she was eighteen. I think yes, uh both live very <laughs> sheltered, weird lives. We've got we were, it's really sad about. that we haven't had uh Gemma on yet. She'd be such an amazing uh person to talk to about her. Gotta get her on to talk about this mayonnaise. I was just yeah. thinking about it this morning. I was uh, I was sad about the uh, Aileen Kaminsky crumb passing. Um, oh my god! Yeah, and I was just, I, I went I was stalking around Aileen's uh, Instagram yesterday, and it's like oh, feeling sad, and just, you know, thinking about her. And uh, I saw she doesn't follow many comics people. She's just kind of like eh, fuck everything. But she was following Jay Webster Sharp. I just, I, 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 that really tickled me that you know just thinking about Aileen just like ah it's all a bunch of shit <coughs> Aileen Webster Sharp yes please like, that's good that's stuff that's nice yeah it's, I don't know good on you Jay Webster good stuff you know it's, they it's, have uh, uh, Gemma was telling me she sent cool their she sent a uh, work to their uh, gallery Aileen's gallery a long time ago and they, she she's like pen pals with Crumb and, and, and Aileen that's lovely yeah, no, very sad news. I mean, an outpouring of grief from the comics community, and uh, a lot of the more bitter, uh, horrible leftists I saw wishing death on Robert Crumb. Oh, why couldn't it have been Robert Crumb? But, all right, yeah, it's it's not the time. The man's grieving. Like for fuck's sake, you fucking vultures, you pieces of shit. Horrible yeah. people. I saw that. It was just like you couldn't even wait two days to not be an absolute uh, insensitive. Yeah, uh, some vicious cunt. Even Kim O'Connor kept it civil. So, you know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. just volumes, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, outpouring of legitimate grief. I mean, you know, very, you know I, I never met her, sadly. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, like, oh, this, you know, lots of personal anecdotes. I didn't post anything. So it's like, ah, you know, I didn't know her. And, you know, I, I enjoyed everyone's remembrances and stuff. But, yeah, very sad. I don't know. It's one of those, yeah. One of those ones yeah, I was really you. sad. I mean, I just love her comics so much. I, it was, it was so devastating to hear because I, I, she was never someone in my mind that could die because I mean you just don't think of that. I didn't ever think of her ever dying. Like she was like uh, always seemed so youthful and like healthy and like happy and, and in every video I've seen an interview. And it's like I'm pretty sure this has to be her last uh, published like periodical comic book work other than her painting work. But yeah, this has I to know. be the last thing. I haven't get one of those either. So I'm really pissed off now. I think I saw yeah, I mean, which one is that? The, that's the new, uh, the new controversial one. The COVID one, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not even controversial. It's just the cover. Is this is like about them, yeah. like, like? Of course, it's not controversial. It's, it's just dickheads on Twitter making noise about things. Such a fucking cunt. Yeah. yeah. An interesting so comment with interesting not... people talking about an interesting thing. Right. And there's some really beautiful, like, painted. Uh, uh, Crumb and Alien duo uh, comics. Yeah, she was a close to that. So hilarious. Yeah, I really wish I'd gotten that now. It was like 60 bucks or something. 
Yeah, and it was it's another nice. forty dollars from David's Werner Gallery. But I mean, my gosh, it's a brand new Robert Crumb comic book. It's forty pages. I'll, I'll pay for you actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like Wig Shop it. had copies not very long ago. Let me see. Yeah, partners, wig shop, a bunch of people. I think just like a couple of weeks ago I saw again, but I was like, ah, they'll sell out again probably. Yeah, it, it's really it's really funny. I I enjoyed it. I'm so I'm so happy I bought it. I mean, I love uh, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I love Chrome. And no, no, wig shop sold out. Yeah, I think it's much. Yeah, I do love a bit of honest conversation, a bit a bit of scandal. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, very, very. Fucking hell. Mm. Come on, Alan. Where are my boys? Yeah, their boys. Fucking Instagram cut us off. Why was it a few weeks ago that they uh, they were letting us do two hour videos and now they just fucking rudely, unceremoniously cut us off? I see you out there, Cuckerberg. Pasty fucker. No, oh, here we go. There's Petty. I took that break to check the ship in, and it's left the uh, it's left the facility, so it's on the way. To... It's it's in the air. In the air. Oh fuck. All right. Well, I mean, they do the mail on uh, Saturday here in America. You know, in a Commonwealth country, I don't think you get mail on Saturday. Certainly not in Australia. Yeah. I don't think the Royal Mail does it. Um, oh God! Oh, if it turns up, it'll, it'll be so exciting. Gosh. Yeah. I'm on tinter hooks. I'm, I'm literally on tinter hooks. I never, I never know what they are. What tinter hooks are? I always thought it was tender hooks. I was saying tender hooks for years, but apparently it is tinter hooks. Yeah, I don't know. Or I've been misled. Maybe now I've started saying tinterhooks. So I just sound like I was a moron. My, my wife was tricking me. Wouldn't Big be life time. update. What? Big life update. I switched from the 5% jewel to the 1.8% jewel. Oh, my God. This is huge. So I think this might help me quit. Wow. Fucking hell, yeah. Well, right, join, join me. I quit, you know, what, three months ago now? I think Nate's in the requests folder because oh, he joined. Man. Sorry, I'm busy assembling my furniture here. Um, let me just finish. Me and Alan will just do a few twists here. Oh, there we go. All right. Where's our little Where's our little horsey boy? I once had a guy um, in school. He goes, uh, he had like a Stanley knife. You, you know, like a Stanley knife? Yeah, Stanley knife, Stanley blade. And he was walking around with it. Does anybody want to meet my friend Stanley? Oh, that's horrible. What was that, Nate? What's happened? I thought it was Tinder Press or Titty Press. <laughs> what are you talking about? Tinto. Always with the jokes, Nate. An obscure, yeah, again, a bit. obscure publisher joke there. What is Tinto Press again? I know Tinto Press. What do they do? That's what Ted and Torsia. They did the Noah sketchbooks. They did Goya 5. That's they, they, how I know them. They're quite nice at putting books together. I've got to give you some table decoration, mate. I should shout this guy out because I didn't last time. I don't know if he's watching. He's awesome, man. He made, he made a, a Huff Dealey sculpture and uh, he made a... What else did he make? A Tedward sculpture. He made a Mike sculpture. That's lovely, yeah. Yeah. lovely little sculpture. He unfriended you, what? Beautiful. Josh, I want to get a picture of Tedward and Huff like that, and I want to get that tattooed on my forehead. Yeah. And I want to get uh, his sculpture of um, World of Jones. I want to put that on top. Nick, would you get any tattoos? You're not a tattoo guy, right? I just, I just haven't gotten any yet. And I remember the times that I wanted tattoos, specific tattoos, so bad. And I wish I would have gotten them in the moment because I wouldn't get them now. I don't really care anymore now. But I remember the first time discovering Daniel Klaus. If I would have gotten a tattoo then, it was such a, it was such a like pin pinnacle moment in my life when I was like yeah. seventeen, finding those comic books. I've always wanted to get the Mr. Jones on the foot. Yeah, you know, the little Mr. Jones. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'd foot, actually get but... it on the foot too. That's cool. To get it on my foot, you know, that'd be great. I when I was like ten, I really, really wanted a, uh, a, a Venom from Spider-Man tattoo, 
And my mother was like a cool biker chick. And I think she almost let me. And I, I remember thinking like recently, like I'm really glad my mother didn't really let me get that Venom tattoo. You know, it would have no. been really, if you had I could have got it blacked out, I guess, put like a big, you know, Square, big, yeah, big something over it, yeah. Square. I'm so glad my mum didn't let me get the big no effects tattoo I wanted when I was 16. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that wouldn't have been bad. Yeah. Josh, you I me? wonder all the things that your mom didn't let you do. Thank God. Who knows what they should? Who knows where you could have been if she would have let you do all the things you wanted to do? Yeah. You could have been off the side of the road somewhere. Like you could have been really, really, really down in the dirt. But look at you now. You're like, you got, you got, you got the frames behind you. He's professional. <laughs> ahead he's, of you. he's a live stream star, a rising comic book star. He's got a Fanographics deal and a French deal, multiple French deals with multiple Plural. publishers. My gosh. Yeah, that's cool. Fucking killing it! You can you can meet Josh live at the Permanent Damage Ye Olde Zine Fair this Sunday at 12 p.m. until 10 p.m. in Los Angeles. Permanent record. Well, you can buy this split book. Don't let the cover fool you. It is a split book. It's 50-50. It's not a Josh cover. book with a with a bonus strip. It's a split book. That's got 14 pages of hardcore Hanselman in there. This is good yeah. stuff. It's like I was dying laughing reading this. This is. I loved your episodes in it. So very fun. We had a lot of fun making that. I mean. Yeah, it was great. Rifted out and had a, had a good laugh. Went on down to the Kinkos and printed it up ourselves. It was joyous, a joyous experience. It's the true magic of comics. A couple of friends hanging yeah, out, yeah. having a laugh, making a book together, getting excited about a zine fair, and you know. Just Making, making stuff, making art. Now we'll make a bit of money, you know. <laughs> some people will have a laugh, you know. Some people are going to get a bit of joy from it. Beautiful. My favorite cool. thing in the world is the best. Thank We're you. very positive here at Manga Chat. There's a lot of sour cunts out there. Like, you know, the Soul Rag crew can often be very sour. And there's no money in comics. And like, oh, it's really horrible. And nah. Just all doom and gloom. But my God. Which is funny because we have the reputation for being shit talkers, but yeah. we're very positive. Yeah, they're the ones I see <laughs> making fun of people's looks and stuff. Like... Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's uh, one of those are we the baddest yeah. moments where I think they should be like looking in the mirror and like, are we the baddest? Yeah. Yeah, just chilling, having a good time. Yeah, yeah. God, I love life. It's just, just beautiful. Count your blessings while you can, you know. So yeah, if you're in LA this Sunday, come to Permanent Records Roadhouse. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a, a fucking banger, Josh. Come on, say, say it how it is. It's gonna be yeah, a yeah, you got banger. Excited to see what Johnny Ryan has. Yeah. You know. He'll get his dick out of someone, wave it around. And a high oh, fish, one of the best. Bit of pop oh, yeah, that's penis. so exciting. Yeah, she's been in America fish. for so long. How long is she here? That's cool. Well, that she's, she's, she's doing a residency. She's leaving early December or something. She's been here for three months. I visited her mansion in the Palisades where she's staying um, for the residency. And yeah, no, we were supposed to have her on this week, but she, she couldn't make it. She's got so much on. She's very popular. Yeah, she was rolling some delicious cigarettes up in Seattle by the Fanographics bookstore, rolling them up. Oh, yeah. No, I bought that tobacco, fast. I think. I, she was smoking barley shag, and I was like, no, 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 you're not. And I took her over to my old tobacconist and got us some Amsterdam shag, which is a far superior shag. And wow, the next so time I ran in with her, she What? Have you dipped recreationally back into the world of tobacco? I and have. Um, no, when I hang out with Anna, I have a couple of smokes. Uh, you know, yeah, just... Uh, the first time, I was like, I really, it had been months, and I really just wanted to test myself and see what it was like, and if I'd backslide, and <clears throat> I was kind of repulsed with the first puff, and it's like, ugh. And I enjoyed it, but it was like, I don't need to do this all the time. Like, this is a fair weather activity. You're at the pub. You know, I, I don't get out to the pub much these days, but, you know, if I do, you know, I say, yeah, all right, I'll have a cigarette with my beer. If, if there's a German around who has some good cigarettes, why not? Right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know? No, I don't. I don't think so either. Especially because you, you, it's it's the days that count that you're uh, 
like before. Like you've been, you've done, gone so long without smoking anything. But I, I just can't believe I used to wake up in the morning and smoke immediately. Like before I went to bed, you know, it was like every forty minutes needed a cigarette. It's disgusting. I was coughing constantly, felt like shit. And, you know, I do miss it. I mean, I, I wish the the human body could imbibe smoke in that fashion, and it wouldn't affect us. Because I love smoking, but you know, it's just a learned behavior that you have to unlearn. Yeah, and I, I unlearned it. The no Gallagher way. Yeah. Wait. So, Simon, do you think that you would have quit smoking if you did not have a child? No, or no. Is... I, I only quit because of fear of dying and, and leaving my child fatherless uh, and my wife. Uh, to you know, yeah. No, I. It's just purely about living, and you know, I'm a new person. The old me is dead. I, that person doesn't exist anymore. You know, I'm still me, but I'm a very different me. Yeah, that's so. That's that's insane. Yeah, like if you if you didn't have if you didn't have a kid, you, you'd be very like reckless still, and probably a complete workaholic still. Oh and, like, yeah. Make any time. Yeah, non-stop, just trying to make that million dollars, trying to get that bag, just, you know, just cranking it all fucking day, just, you know, ideas vomit, and, yeah, and just smoking, and, you know, smoking and token, and joking, and all that jazz. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's, that's, that's interesting. It's, it's the power of caring for another being, and being responsible for someone who's not you. Um, yeah, I don't understand how deadbeat dads can exist just like yeah you soulless cunts you pieces of shit <laughs> yeah yeah and deadbeat mums or whatever just deadbeat parents you know just don't get how you can uh live your life knowing there's a kid out there that you're just you know, you're doing nothing for or you've just abandoned garbage people i mean how i hate it when people do this but deadbeat mum is a good band name it is pretty good deadbeat mum yeah, we should start a band called Deadbeat Mum, you and me, Josh. And Nate, maybe we could start like a manga chat band called Deadbeat Mum. Yeah, yeah, Deadbeat Mum. CBM. Well, I you've got a nice first show, that's You're... what they're going to say. You're upset. You're like, what are you doing, Nate? I'm not a Deadbeat Mum. What are you doing? <laughs> this isn't autobiographical, is it, Nate? <laughs> yeah, that one is no, the... it's, it's about, you know, it's about Simon's mum. I think, I think we need to do an album cover with the three of our mothers all together. I, think we oh, yeah. I am serious about us doing like a split CDR release, Nate. I said that. Simon, I was going to email you about that. I was not, I, I was, I did not take it as a joke. No, I've been listening to like old like music tracks I've made like last year and like, okay, I can maybe put some vocals on this and some sound effects and like, yeah, okay, let's, you know, and I was like serious. Like, okay, I've got to finish these songs and like me and Nate and if we can get Josh to record something as well, we'll put out a, a CD. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a one trick pony slash girl mountain split CDR or whatever we want to call ourselves. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, one trick pony slash girl mountain split CDR sounds like a good idea. Just pony yeah, mountain. Just, <laughs> what? I recorded like two songs this week, so I've been I've been on a real recording um, uh, whim because I'm finishing up my new CD now that I'm gonna be selling. Pony yeah. Mountain is another nice uh, band name. Well, that's not bad. Better than Girl Mountain. Well, Pony, Pony Mountain could be like the name of the split or something, maybe. Maybe. Well, we could come together and just we could just call ourselves Pony Mountain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true, true. It could be that a could, separate separate cool. project or something. Yeah. I feel like this could work out well. I feel like I could send you stuff and then you record over top of it or something. Or maybe we do like four songs each. And vice versa, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe like four songs each, then two songs we, we send to each other and do different things over top different vocals maybe some harmonies or something mash up uh, collab songs and four solo songs and 10 for 10 songs we'll make some art for it we'll, yeah, yeah maybe it comes out in february who even knows march who knows yeah. that'd be really fun I'd, I, yeah I, great I, idea i miss making cdrs I used to print them draw on them I'd, you know print the artwork cut it out fold it so i'd sew it by hand oh, oh my god it. Me too. In in, uh, in high school, I would do that with my old my old band. That's how I learned how to do double sided printing. And I used like when it when it comes out the printer, uh, you know, like uh, uh, flip it towards you and then put it back in. That's how I learned that. Um, I love CDs so much. <laughs> yeah, I want to. CDs are a retro thing for you, Nate. Right? No, not even CDs were like modern as fuck. Whenever I was like uh, growing up, like that was like how you got stuff. Always, I'm yeah. not new CD. 
It's like cool. We got a uh, Chris Chris Tomlin new Christian Rock CD, or uh, well, I don't know what else it was uh, back then, but yeah. yeah is there anything down. more depressing than a download code? <laughs> Fuck a download code. That's mid. You don't need a download code now in streaming. I mean, unless even when you buy physical media and it comes with a download code, it just gives me a sad feeling. Yeah. I, I keep buying DVDs and they have like these digital code pieces of paper and I just throw them away. But then I thought, oh, I should give them away. Maybe I can like post them online and someone can like, who cares about that shit can like use the code and watch the movie and have it. But I just, I hate it. I've got the DVD. Like, yeah, yeah. Up, DVDs don't have any booklets anymore. It's always empty. They well, even have like yeah. the clasps for a little booklet in the DVDs, brand new DVDs from, from goddamn Walmart. They have the class for the book, no book. They're lazy. It's horrible. They have those like chunks, like they cut out the shape of the recycling logo. So it just, it feels like flimsy and shit. Have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. The, the, the Criterion Collection's nice though. You get all your weird shit. You know, I've got lots of nice Criterion Collections with little booklets and cards and fold out shit and posters. It's nice. They go the extra mile. You, you right, there's pay, always a place for that extra. stuff. Like, like, I, niche. I got this, uh, I got this, I really wanted to watch this movie called Triple R. It's an Indian, like, Tollywood action romance movie. It's supposed to be, like, insane and, like, incredible. It's, like, CGI tigers in it. And they filmed a scene with, like, 100,000 extras or something. Oh, wow. But, yeah, I got this from, like, eBay from, like, a in Sri Lanka. And it's Strange taste. Really hey, that's cool. It's really weird. It's obviously home printed. I tested the disc and it looks really clear. And like the movie's on there. But it's like, thank you, Movie World. One of best store in eBay. Like, it's just, there's a little card in there. Yeah. If you leave me positive feedback, deal again. But yeah, they're wow. really good though. He sent me it. And, you know, it's nice to support a small Sri Lankan businessman or woman who's selling little bootleg uh, Tollywood movies. You know, I don't. I could watch this on a stream. I could like pirate bail. I, I don't want to do that. I, I mean, the filmmakers probably aren't getting any money from this anyway. But it's just nicer. I just I have this nice little thing, and it's in a little bag. It just makes me happy. I just like items, I guess. Like a bird that likes shiny things. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would always adore physical media. I have stacks and stacks everywhere. Always, it's very um, overwhelming sometimes when you realize. How many stacks? Yeah, no, it's getting a bit out of hand here in the studio, especially like Josh and I were talking about it recently, like, you know, just having lots of stuff, but it's, you know, and trying to move with lots of stuff. And uh, I used to have no stuff, you know, just a few books. And but now I just, I have so much shit, you know, I, mean, I just, I have a lot of DVDs and a lot of crap and just, you know, my book archive and fucking mannequins and, yeah, it's just it's, it's a lot to cart around. I mean, the more more books you make, the more shelves you're gonna have just for your own books if you get them translated and stuff. Yeah, I've been to certain older artists, you know, who are like thirty years older than me. I've been to their houses and seen their archives, and it's like a whole room. Like, it's like the the room in Alan Partridge, uh, Josh, the, the Jed Maxwell's Alan Partridge room. You know. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, yeah. You you get to the point. You've just got like a whole room full of all this shit that you've made. No, I can't get rid of it all. I can't get rid of my archive. You know, I need to have all these editions. I mean, you know, I've got to have the the Danish Crisis Zone and the the Norwegian Mega Hex and the, the the Russian editions. I can't, you know. What is uh? What's uh, the Hail Satan? What Spanish. Are... Oh, okay, but it's that's it's... a full that's the Fulgencio version of Worst Behavior. Oh my lord! No yeah, it's way! It's a lovely, it's a lovely. It's got edition. the the um the monster energy uh uh pinups, right? I think it might. Yeah, I think. Or they came as um promotional cards or something. I don't know. Anyway, bit wow. of crap that we have to hold on to. Now I'm just like building more furniture so I can hold more crap as as the world goes down the crapper. I'm buying all this stuff. I'm like, oh, you know. Buying it for the future, like next year, like okay, I've got all these cheap DVDs when I'm deep in the hole on Meg's Coven, I'll watch them all, you know, next year when I'm working. But I don't know, there's so much horrible shit going on. It's like, what's the point of it all? And will I be able to afford the electricity to run my DVD player or my lamp? You know, I don't know. 
Gosh, only time will tell. I'm very excited for this. Next well, it's exciting Friday. to see where it goes. You know, yeah, the whole, oh, did you mean Meg's Coven or just reality? No, I meant Meg's Coven. I'm not thinking about reality. I don't really concern myself with such things anymore. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Oh, no, do I really? I mean, you know, I'm off in my little bubble out here. I'm stuck in a, I'm stuck in a bubble of, of, <coughs> of the bombs haven't come for us yet. We're huh? living in a, the bombs haven't come for us yet, but they might. Oh, they're on their way. Do you hear them? Wait. Yeah, I think I hear. I think I hear them coming. There's a lot of helicopters out where I'm living. It's just like, yeah, it constantly freaks me out. It's like, God. Damn, not as bad man. as those blue angels in Seattle. Those fucking jets every summer. It's fucking nightmares. Felt like I had PTSD or something. Like bombs were going to drop. Jeez, yeah. Well, that's why I'm you know, I'm staying inside and drawing paper is the only thing that makes me feel like a not like a horrible feeling. So there's nothing else to do. And probably oh, yeah. people watching this are also staying at home drawing too. Don't go out tonight. You, hey, your friend texting you. You got hey, don't check your phone. Your friend's texting you. Hey, you want to come see? You want to come see uh, this new uh, this new band that's really lame. No. <laughs> if it's Jimmy Brown, though, you get out there and you check him out. I've been listening to him a lot. I, uh... I had to stay home from a Jimmy Brown concert recently. I didn't have I didn't have the uh, the funds or the time. I was very busy. You've probably seen him live before, though, haven't you? No. <gasps> I've just I've just met him. I've just seen it. I've just like gone to shows with him. Seen oh him gosh. at a show and hung out. I've been him. listening to him a lot, and I've like my new, my two favorite songs right now are uh, "Boneless Woman." I think that's, oh. I think that's top for me right now. So wow! Good. And uh, and then the Bin Man one. Oh, I think those Man. two. Yeah, we were listening to that in the car the other day. Me and Josh were cruising around with the windows open, blasting Jimmy Brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bin Man, Bin Man. <laughs> No, I, I love to draw to Jimmy Brown, and I love to get really sad to Jimmy Brown because he gets you in a good mood, even though it's so sad. Yeah, kiss <coughs> me once, kiss me twice. <laughs> yeah, some of them are just plain good songs, honestly. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's like, a good uh, song. I don't want to ever die, and the flowers one. Um, like they're good songs. His voice is good. It sounds nice. It's like layered. Nice. Yeah, I, mean, I think a lot of people just listen to Jimmy Brown. They just laugh at him, and it's because he's like a you know fat nineteen year old with degenerative conditions, and he's you know clumsy alcoholic. But I, he's got a good heart. I, I I think he's a good boy. He's a genuinely good boy. Um, yeah, the synths are always so good. The mu the instrumentals are like he knows what he's doing. He's he's a and he's, the song the songs while they're you know absurd, they they seem like they're coming from a real place. I agree. I think he's like the next Susan Boyle, frankly. <laughs> what? Voice, yeah, the voice okay. of an angel, you know. Do you know Susan Boyle? Of Maybe. course, American Idol, right? Uh, yeah, or, so you think you've got talent? Well, she's British, isn't she? Yeah, well, I think American it was X Factor. Uh, X Factor, that, that was, was it. They're all disgusting anyway, but... Yeah, I think Jim is like the male Susan Boyle. I can see him playing stadiums in the next few months for sure. Oh, my favorite Susan Boyle fun fact. Uh, when when she her album came out, it was uh, hashtag Susan Album Party. But if, you can read that as sus anal bum party. <laughs> so a, lot of, a lot of people like sus anal bum party. Like, what? Why is that trending? But it was actually Susan Album Party. Yeah, so Susan Boyle, she's, you know, she took it on the chin, that one. She's, uh, that was embarrassing for her. Yeah, that's 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 horrible. That's that's that's. that's... It, it was unfortunate because she's a lovely woman. I know, but of course that happened to her. Of course, that's so fucked. Yeah, she's, she's uh, she's got some bad luck. That Afro princess. See, I'm looking forward to a future Jimmy Brown sus anal bum party. Yeah. I mean, I he's he coming up with some new books soon. Yeah, he might fly to LA. I'm thinking of becoming a gig promoter again. I've flirted with the idea. I used to put on shows. I've put on, like, uh, microphones, uh, Little Wings, like much old K-Record shit back in the day. I've thought about coming back out of retirement and putting on a Jimmy Brown show at uh, Drifters, the local dive bar out here. No way, really? But oh, I'd just fly God. him out from Manchester, you know, and have to get him out from Didsbury, and, you know, I'd have to put him up in a local Best Western or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't know how much money we'd make. I mean, we passed the hat around at Drifters, but 
you know, I don't know how well it'll go down. The crowd there, you know, I don't know if they're going to like Boneless Woman and I can smell the mice having sex behind the walls. He's played, um, he's played California before, like recently, like in the past six months. No. Yes. I'm just a Johnny come lately. I'm just a bandwagon jumper to the phenomenon that is. No, 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 not really. I mean, it's still like, uh, it's still, uh, like... we're in on the ground floor. I don't, yeah, we're absolutely in on the ground floor. He's not, I mean, he's not on, uh, he's not when you walk into Panera, but he's not on the radio. So he hasn't really made it in my eyes. I swear I heard, um, I swear I heard one in a cab the other week. It was, um, it was help. I swallowed a button battery. I swear I heard that in an Uber. <laughs> I remember one time I was in an Uber going to work at the zoo because I was so late, man. And it was one of the nights where I get—I had a little money in my Venmo. I looked in my Venmo out of desperation, thinking there's nothing in that thing. And there was like 20 bucks in the morning. I said, fuck it, I'm Ubering. And they were playing. You know that song? No. What is it? Well, I don't really remember, but it's been in my head since. This is like uh, Never Mind the Buzzcocks. What? <laughs> no, no, it was it was rap. I just don't know what. Oh, uh, was a rapidy rap? Yes. Do it again, Nate. I want to get this. Yeah, so I was just it was like it was like it was like. Wee, 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 wee. It was supposed to be about. It was supposed to be like a siren. Yeah, a Do it rapper. again, one more time. No. It was a rapper doing an impression of I a siren. I was talking about Little Wayne. Yes, I actually did forget. It was Little Wayne. Uh, yes. Someone just someone in the comments who, just did it. It's like someone, super memorable, but I just can't remember the name of it. What? It's stuck in my head. What? Someone in the chat just got it. Yeah, yeah. That's the first time I ever heard Little Wayne too, probably, and also the last time. But that's a good song. It's very comedic. Little Wayne. I'll have to check him out. Never heard of him. Yeah. He's been around, actually, Simon. He's been around quite a while. Really? Yes. He's pretty old, I think. I think he's actually quite lost it too. Uh oh. Tommy, did you ever like um did you ever like David Bowie? Oh of course, I still like David Bowie. Yeah, because I, I like the um Jackson uh, has got him in his uh 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 in the in the crisis zone calendar in the background. Oh yeah. Is it, it's, 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 no, I think it it, it is it, it is a uh it is Jackson. It's in a, when he's in his Bowie phase. It's it's good. It's good. Oh, actually, I had both of those posters in my teenage bedroom. I had the uh, the Einstein poking his tongue out poster, and uh, and a Bowie poster. I love Why'd Bowie. you get the Einstein one? I don't know. Someone gave it to me. I don't know where it came from. It was this weird. I don't know, it was like laminated, but the edges were trimmed off. It always, that's a, such an inconsequential note, but it always just confused me. Like, why is there not proper laminate? Why is it cut off the edge? But the memories that we hold on to. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I had it. I think you just wanted to be smart. I think it was inspiring. Yeah, yeah I think so. It just made me feel like, you know, I, I knew I was never going to go to college. So I guess I just wanted to have the, the college type decor i had the uh, the main poster i remember as a kid i had a harley davidson oh <laughs> nice i read a lot of framed photos well i kind of a poster a print this band big time rush whenever i was growing up oh, in around cool. 2000, or 2008 and 9 there was this there's this teeny bopper band big time rush and i got this magazine one time at walmart and i thought the one guy was so hot logan from uh, Big Time Rush, so I hung it up in my room like a little girl. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I had a, also had a Diary of a Wimpy Kid poster too, because he was just like me. <laughs> was it like this? No. That's that's something else. That's beautiful. You're just showing off this this stuff, Josh. People got to buy it. I mean, they can see the back cover. At permanent damage this weekend. Uh, they'll, they'll freeze frame it, Josh, and they'll read all the jokes. Man, so so exciting. That's just Dodger size, right? That's just five and a half by eight and a half? You guys just did it. Five and a half by eight and a half. 
I, I like that style. I think your guys' um, uh, comics will look good at that. Um, I like it. It's a little... My writing's a bit small for my eyes, but I think I need glasses and I'm in denial. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Josh, I love your hair today, too. You look so pretty. You're like... Um, you're like... Um, so you're like... I don't know, man. You're like a new kind of animal looking at you. <laughs> It's like it's so smooth and long, and like you, you never looked like this before. You look like you're gonna sing something, and I'm not gonna understand any of the words. I just wanna sort of run my hands through that hair down at the Pettinger Zoo. Yeah. <laughs> the Pettinger Zoo. Mate, mate, the second you start calling it a mane, I'm out of it. A mane? I would never do that to you. I hate when people call mine a mane. <laughs> Well, I like it, Josh. I've always thought you looked better with long hair. Um, oh, thank you. You know, I mean, it's mostly just like laziness about cutting it, but yeah, midlife crisis or something, possibly. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there you know, is a lot of permanent damage? What's that? I just did a little promo for permanent damage. Another one? Yeah, trying to get Keenan some uh, on promo. Oh, what, like animated? No, I'm just, just saying it. Oh, just, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Right now on the show, what are you, what are you posting? Are you talking about? No, I'm just saying it now. Oh, oh right. What, well, say, great right. promotion. Yeah, no, well, when is permanent damage, Josh? What? December 4th, 12 p.m. Oh, wow. And who's going to be there? Let's see, we got uh, Matt Groening's going to show up. Oh! -ho. And by the Tedwood split. Oh, Jaime Hernandez will probably be there with uh, Kathleen Skeleton. Yeah, yeah that's true. Too. Big celebrities. If you want to be inappropriate and ask Jaime for an autograph behind Katie Skelly's table, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, ask oh him what he had for breakfast. That? All the time. That's David Joe might turn up again. Who knows? Um, Rick and Morty creator Justin Roiland might show up. Who knows? Yeah. Last Who time knows? we had David Cho. Who knows? Exactly. Who chose? Um, you know, lots of Simpsons animators might be there. You know. You yeah, know, yeah. Usually get a bunch of like Simpsons animators out at these things. You know. So, oh, I wish I could make comics like you, but I'm stuck working for the Simpsons. It's horrible. So yeah, feel for you, buddy. I feel for you. Walt Dawn, the director of Trolls 2 World Tour, came last time? Yeah, yeah people were shitting themselves. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Josh, yeah. maybe Ugh. someone will come up to you and say, oh my gosh, this is so great. Have you pitched this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love when that happens. I love telling them to fuck right off. Yeah, yeah. I love this book that you spent so much time on and actually put effort into. Have you ever considered making it into something so super lame? Yeah, have you thought about it being sodomized by a team of 50 executives and money men and marketers? Well, no, I haven't, actually, because that sounds fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, I've always said, but I've, honestly, though, I've always said uh, comics is always a stepping stone to animation. Bigger and better things. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what we all want, isn't it? I'd love to lose my autonomy. Yeah, I'd love to give. I'd love to give it all up to a cloud. Yeah, a cloud in the know, sky. Work hard for a year or two, and then just get unceremoniously cancelled by a streamer that doesn't understand you at all. Fantastic. Yeah, but everybody should totally go watch the Poloni Show, though. Megan Ma. dot <laughs> com, my favorite website. I mean, it's great stuff. I just got an email yesterday. They're sending me an exclusive Poloni Show crew hoodie. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to sell it on eBay. <laughs> does it say, does it say uh, your name on it? Is it? Are they named? I don't know. It's a zip front hoodie. That's all I know. And they've requested my name and address so they can my size. I said XL because I like things big. So I'm cool. And I'm into streetwear. I'm still young. I'm still fresh. Um, yeah. So yeah, I got the uh, got the XL. Don't know a zip front hoodie, so I'm assuming no full image. It'll just be like a small image. So it'll uh, probably say just like Poloni Show, and then on the back, 
there'll be like some Poloni characters. I'm hoping it'll be the image with Al. Like the there was a promotional image of like a mansion that had my Al character there, but that'd probably be a bit much to ask. So. I think it'd be cool if it was like a full bleed hoodie of that image where it's like the it takes up the whole uh, hoodie with no like it's just the full image like full um, yeah so that's that, that's similar to what I'd do if I could design it but I'm not designing it but yeah the zip front concerns me it's like uh, recently it became a thing where <clears throat> all the comics people were selling t-shirts that had a, a tiny little image on a pocket hate it big image on the back I, I lived in Seattle. So it's like, I love the image on the back because you're always wearing a jacket. It's like, just put the big image on the front, you fucking idiots. Dude, I don't understand that. I And for years, since I was in high school, I say years. Because a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like when someone who's young talks about their life like they've lived. Oh, like I, saw some, I saw some pricks saying stuff about like that on Twitter again. You know, fucking backless cunts, bunch of sad old men. Anyway, go on. I mean, my gosh, how old are you? You don't even remember the time whenever you felt like the time was so long. I haven't had much of it. It feels like a long time, so I'm going to say it. But I remember for so long since high school, I've been saying that uh, uh, I hate it. Because all of the kids in my high school would wear that. It'd be – because all the kids in my high school would shop at Zoomies, Paxson. They lived, I lived in a very, um, like, uh, it was just, like – it was white trash sub- suburbia, but it was the only school for so long. So everybody went there. And so all of these like mall kids, just like lame mall kids would wear uh, zoomies and, and it would always be like the same. It'd be like a rose here. And then it'd be a big rose on the yeah. back of the chair. It says, Donnie Young have no friends. Or like something so lame, like lone wolf. I like it that way. <laughs> full, or, how, about this? how about this? Full moon, full bottle, full friends. Wow, and there's a skeleton in the middle. That's crazy, dude. That's Beautiful. So I hated it. It, it. it doesn't make any sense either. I always felt so fat in them because it, there's nothing there. It's just like a little thing, and it, it's just blank. They cover your belly lines. Yeah, there's nothing to cover it up. The protrusion, this little paunch. It's like, I yeah. want a big image of a comic character there. To like, so they're like, oh, wow, look at that comic character. Not like, look at that paunch. They're not looking about how fat you got over summer because you went to work mm. at Dorf Park. And they had $2 fries every single day. <laughs> or maybe that's just an infection. Well, you see a comic artist, like Comic Arts Brooklyn, selling their shirts. Like, <clears throat> wouldn't you want people walking around town with the image? Like, you know, walking into a 7 Eleven, oh, the hot dog, please. And they're like, wow, what's that image on the front? You know, yes. it's, like, it's like walking billboards. I mean, yeah, sure. I, had, I, had, I had one person at Trader Joe's and one person at Sprouts Farmer's Market who stopped me when I was wearing the Muscle Horse shirt and was like, oh, that's cool. What is that? Oh, that's crazy. That's nice. And that wouldn't have happened with the tiny front design. No. I tried to make that as big as possible. I made. I asked them to do the print at the all the way to the bottom because I love when a shirt, like, it, it's really full. Like, I love when you sit yeah. and you can't even see what else is on the shirt. It's way for yes. the stand-up look. I insist on that too with Secret Headquarters. It costs more because they have to make multiple screens. Mm-hmm. But I don't want like a double XL t-shirt having like the, the same size print as a small. Because then the small gets the big image and then the XL like shrinks down to like this. I yeah, want, it looks oh, so I bad. Want, yeah, I want the whole fucking coverage. So this is, a, you know, I want your art big. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I always design it with the full shirt in mind. I, I don't have the jimmy brown t-shirt next week but when i made this i wanted this keyboard to be at the bottom edge of the shirt i don't remember if it is though it's not it's, it could be a bit it's a decent size image but it could it could be bigger so it's probably like you know here's my cock the keyboard's probably like here so it's a bit oh, okay, far away from the cock but yeah, it's, it's keyboard good. It looks like a belt that's what i wanted it to look like a belt or something not quite, but it's not as bad as like you see shirts where it's just like this small. See Jasper, I love Jasper, but his new T-shirt, it's like a small little rectangle up here. Yeah, like, that's nah. that's not a belly cover. That's just a breast. No, it's like yeah, it's like I'm, I don't want to wear a dynamite diva bralette. Like that's what it's going <laughs> to look like. Uh, you know, but it's got a it's got a custom tag in there. Like if he's if he's selling them at uh, permanent damage, I'll, I'll be getting one to use as a pajama top. Uh, you know. Jasper is watching. Explain yourself in the comments, Jasper. I mean, you know, it's, it's, the the so, you know, it's just like all these kids making the little pocket tee with the big image on the back. Like, you know. Jasper's but, just trying to be hip. That's his problem. 
He knows he's not going to stay on forever. He's trying to be young with the kids. Grow up. You know, it's 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 you know it's your personal choice you know, how you want to make a t-shirt you know it's Freudian it's revealing it reveals a lot about who we are when you know people see our Freudian, t-shirt yeah. image size preferences. Yeah, I like I like my shirts to be full, truly. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't made a shirt in a while. They're really expensive. The last t-shirt I made, I literally made like less than a hundred of them, and it like ruined my life for financially for the time that I had that I didn't sell it. It's like until I sold them it like it it really ruined my life financially for that time. It's like um it's like, you know, when the Titanic sunk, you know? They didn't, they lost all that money all the time. It took a long time to build the Titanic and it just sunk, man. That's what it was like for me when I made a T shirt. <laughs> But that was a long time ago. Maybe now it would be less less of a challenge to sell them. But I find with t-shirts, people want them when they're gone and not when they're there. Yeah. They're there for, for like a few pre- – you have a pre-order for a certain amount of time. Nobody buys them. And then once it's over and you don't have any left, it's when people flock. So maybe I should just uh, – maybe I should just move to pants. Pants? Yes. Yeah, I've never experimented with pants. I don't know any cartoonists that sell pants. Might be a... uh, Gabe Howe does like long shorts. Oh, really? Oh, they're nice. That's cool. Yeah, Gabe yeah, rules. Let's make some Tedwood shorts, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a dream. All those shorts are a bit immodest. A little bit. A lot of snake booty shorts with Sheena on, the, on each butt cheek would be nice. Yeah. You could design the shit out of some pants, Nate. My gosh. I'd love to do pants. I mean, it would be very um, uh, unrealistic to do something like that. I don't know who would buy pants. Well, that was like those uh, homemade dresses. Remember? Homemade did those dresses. You could do something cool like that with a, a nice, like, horse print. Oh, I'd love to do some dresses. Or I'd like to do like a. I'd like to do a big piece of square fabric with a bunch of squares on them, and I'd love to sell it for six hundred dollars. <laughs> and I love my birth certificate to be Daniel Gillespie Klaus, where he has the. Uh... Do you have that flag? Is that what that is? This is your. Um, this is your prince. Oh, nice. See, nice. The, the I cap came off. To the See? Dan Klaus uh, uh, bandana thing. Oh, yeah, we got one of those, the Hermes scarf. We have the small one. It's like $600. Oh, look, can you take it's one of those two, out, two, It's two. It's 250 for the small. I'm not going to take these out. Then they're going to get everywhere. They're going to go everywhere. Oh, okay. but, uh, yeah, they, so you get a, a little bit dinged up, see there? That's okay. I mean... It'll be okay. I mean, you know, people still buy them. They understand. They're flat. They'll be flat at the show, and I'll yeah. be selling them rolled up anyway, so... Yeah, got them. That's awesome. That's cool. There will be lots there at the Permanent Damage Show. Also, I have these yeah. 11 by 14 uh, peg your, prints here. I've got your coasters out there. I've got a big box of uh, Jasper's stuff as well. Oh, that's good. He sent them over. He doesn't have to uh, oh. lie to uh, customs anymore. It's good. My scarf. We do an unboxing. Is that all right? Yeah, do an unboxing. Look. Let's see. I wonder why he got paid for this. Yeah. What do you get paid by Hermes? So, you know, the Paris fashion company. It comes in a nice box. This is the, the Daniel Klaus Hermes scarf. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Let's move my keyboard here. There's a, there is a luxury item. What other cartoonist has made a, an Hermes scarf? Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, it's soft. Well, we've, we've actually reached this part of this program where Josh's Google Pixel dies. So now it's just you and I. Oh, Josh is gone. Oh. Yeah, his phone probably fucking died. I can't believe that. 100% silk, dry clean only. Going to the local dry cleaner. If you didn't dry my Daniel Clowes Hermes skull. Yeah, double sided. I suggest the image just bleeds through. Okay, he's drawn and like he, a witch. He's drawn a Tutankhamun, an elephant man, a Frenchman. There's all sorts of funny characters on here. There's the French. Yes, that's Liberty of the Horse. Yeah, it's it's. 
I can't believe it. You know, like um, yeah, there's a horse there. It must be getting you excited there, Nate. Yeah, it isn't. Isn't it the double, the double side, the uh, the squares around the edge different on the other side too? Isn't it different drawings? No, they are the same drawings. It looks to be a bleed through, but it's got like a weird the edge. It's not. It's like a, a lovely hemmed edge. Uh, <sighs> like it's not folded over. It seems like two bits of fabric, but it's not. I, I don't know. It's it's, wow. it's a maze. It's it's well made. Yeah, I would definitely kill a dog for that. You know, these, these are $250. This is the smaller one, you know. This is, I don't know, you can use this as like a, a neckerchief. Maybe I, if my wife will let me, I'll wear it as a, as a little neckerchief, but permanent damage on, uh, on Sunday. Yeah, wear, wearing that would be such a financial uh, flex to even wear, to even see it in real life. It's so, it's like notoriously so expensive. Yeah, it's, it's not the $600 one. I mean, that's mental, you know. I, I know someone actually paid uh, six hundred dollars for for the big one. It's like, what are you doing? But I guess they don't have any children and money you know. to waste. Yeah, they don't, but don't they need groceries or something? I suppose. I guess they're gainfully employed. I don't know what they do. Actually, I don't know what their job is. But I know they're in the navy for a while, but anyway, I don't know. Who knows? Let's get them on and ask. See if uh, see if Josh is lurking in the thing. I think Josh might be trying to come back in. No, nope, it's uh, it's a rando. It's Simo Rajawi Abakir. I don't know who that is. Uh, not a cartoonist that I know. Hmm. I'm just I'm just going to take this table out to the. the uh, I've, Josh usually sits over there, but I've replaced him with a uh, with a television. Uh, usually, Josh would sit here. He's got this is his butt cushion. We drag in a chair from outside. Don't smell and, that. Put his but no, oh God no, no, it's covered in uh, fecal gas. Um, yeah, red. So yeah, yeah. You know, the TV's going to go over here, so then I can sit in the bean bag and enjoy world cinema. I'm going to watch my Sri Lankan import uh, Tollywood movie and have a bit of a rest and a think about the arts and what I could be doing better with my art. Just a bit of reflection. Wait, wait, Josh still goes over every week to draw, though, now? Uh, yes, yes, but, but see, what we'll do, like, I'm going to store his table out in the garage, and when he comes over, I'll just bring it out. I'll be like, here you go. And he can put the table here and put the chair here with his with his fart cushion, and he'll he'll sit here, and he can work <laughs> here. And yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, and then, because wow. uh, throughout the week, that table, it, it ends up covered in soda pop cans and plates, and like, and then, like, oh, Josh is coming tomorrow. I have to clean off his table. You can see a bunch of rings there, like sticky soda pop rings. Uh, yeah, very disrespectful of me to, you know, put the horrible things on Josh's little table. Well, it is my table. It is your table, that's right. Oh, when Josh comes over, it, though, he's not... Do whatever I want to it. Is Josh super indulgent when he comes over? Is he having, like, six, uh, six soda pops and, like, five cakes and what... I'll offer him a, a, an Arizona blueberry iced tea, and he'll have one of those. And he's, he's very polite. You know, we'll, we'll go, we'll go Dutch on on a lunch. You know. Yes. Well, I'm so I'm I'm so excited for um, this show. I mean, I remember coming in May for the first time and seeing the house, and I was thinking it smells so good in here. Where? Like, um, smells like. Um, Something really nice, like uh, like a flower bed in the what spring. What smells good? April. And then I walked into the studio. And I said, "Oh my gosh!" It's in here. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just hot in there. It's muggy. It smells. Jack said, even when it's cold, she's like, "Oh, have you been f after mango chat, you're coming like, ah, oh, you're farting in here." And I'm like, "No, I've literally not passed gas once." But apparently, it always stinks. It must be my breath no, or it, something. I, I, I exaggerate. It's not. It's not actually that bad. But I do. I do know what it's like. My room's the same way. I think it's just, you know, the stink of humans. You know, you move, yeah, it's you stink. Yeah, it's hard. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm really, I'm working out here. I've been building furniture. I've been, you know, I've been, I've ruled up and cut all these pages, which I'm about to get back into. Uh, you know, I've been live streaming and keeping it, keeping it busy, you know. Yeah, how do you feel that, that doing these streams has affected your overall morale slash workflow? at all it kind of uh, it kind of like throws me off like a little bit it kind of confuses me for like half a day because i feel we're very weirdly like seen and like visible in, in a way that feels like um like really like scary in a way even though it's not too many people watching it still you're like still on 
line saying whatever you're saying forever, and I'm never done that before. I'm just used I to was, trying yeah. fun, just dealing with what I say. In- uh, I was uh, yeah, I was apprehensive to do it just because um, it gives away a bit about yourself. You know, it's my face. So this is what I look like. Um, you know, yeah, it's quite horrible. People are going to watch it online. I'm not worried. Yeah, it's so casual and trashy, and, and like it takes away the mystique of everything. I mean, what mystique? Yes, it takes. But it's the trade-off. Do you, do you want to try and build something and build some community and, you know, feel more people talk about comics and, you know, I hope people listen today, you know, they'll go and look, oh, is this John Chandler bastard or what's Breakdown Press? And, like, you know, they'll check out Jasper's work, I guess, from last week. They'll go and buy a Bubbles mag. They'll just get more excited about comics. So, it's, you know, it's worth it. To... I mean, in my opinion, I feel like every all the, all the problems are more in, internal and emotional. Like, really, I... I think anybody that's talking about comics where someone can watch it in an accessible way is really like important to have. And it's for people that actually make them. So I guess if anybody should do it, it's people that make them. But man, it just feels so, uh, I don't know. It feels like against, against uh, any, any thing I'm used to now, but I, but against our better judgment, we're doing it. (laughs) It's week 11. Yeah. yeah, I'm. Ha- I'll, 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 I'm so stoked. I think it's so fun, but it's just, it's just so crazy. So, such- well, it's just seeing Ed Piscor as well. Like, so, you know, he's selling all those books. I think in part because of kayfabe, not to diminish his, you know, whatever his other talents, but you know, I think the community they've built on the cartoonist kayfabe YouTube channel is definitely helping Ed and Jim and Tom sell their work and get it out. And they have built a community. They, they, you know, they've got all these mainstream wizard dickheads in there, but then they'll direct them over to fanographics for stuff. Not enough, not as much as I wish they would, but right. you know, no Noah's doing a good job. Noah just had Klaus on the other day. It's like, what the fuck? Like, why isn't Klaus on manga chat? Like probably because we're terribly unprofessional. We're high. All so time. unprofessional. So Maybe. casual. Yeah. I, I mean I, I was so ashamed I didn't even write any questions out for Grant, one of my favorite artists <laughs> of all time. Right. Can you imagine if we had Klaus on? Like, you know, I mean I did the fucking quote for the back of the complete eight ball. If I really fucking wanted to, I'm sure we could try and drag him on. But it would be against his better judgment to come on. He'd probably be smart enough actually to say, Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> but, but you know. Yeah, I think yeah, it's pretty frustrating seeing that. those other rival podcasts get him on as a guest, though. Cause, you know, our, our, obviously our podcast is the best of the three main comics podcasts. I'm completely, no completely ignoring that. the gutter boys here. I'm just completely just like, you know, oh, I just remember that they exist. <laughs> well, they're not a video one. You know, you, me, and Noah, uh, and right. or whatever. Uh, you know, jo- yeah, you know, it's all video YouTube stuff. Uh, Gutter Boys is just a podcast. You don't get to see their faces. Uh, you know, they're too bussy to put themselves out there. I did just see Jack Cohen, uh, publicist for uh, Daniel Klaus, just say nope in the comments. She's like, nope. Like, no, you're not getting Klaus. Um, I, don't think we're, I don't think we're professional enough to deserve Klaus, to be honest. I'm going to make it. We, we need to make it our mission to get professional enough. We'll get Josh to wear his suit again. We'll stop talking about breakfast. Um, yeah, oh, someone my just gosh. Said, See, Simon, you're pillaging the show. You're ruining what was so great about it to begin with. See, your head, look, yeah. your head is getting oh. big. Oh, my gosh. This is so sad to even see this happen. I think this, yeah. is, uh, I think this is the Poloni Show on Hulu.com, favorite website. Yeah, we're imploding 11 weeks in. Josh has just left. I mean, he's probably pissed off about something. God. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe he's just crying in a way. Maybe he's just sad about something. But I, I don't know. This is interesting because I, I honestly thought to myself, I would never in my life ever want to put myself in a place where I'm talking publicly. I can say anything. Because you'll say something wrong. You'll say something I'm, yeah. so wrong. I, I'm surprised we haven't been cancelled yet. I mean, I've said so many dicey things. Uh, like earlier today, like 20 minutes in, I, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to say it and just drop something real dicey. But, you know, I thought it was funny. But I guess people just aren't picking up on it. People are too stupid to pick up on the, the, the you know, the, the subtle things that we're putting across. Right. And I mean, I, we, we put this stuff in our comics too. Like, I don't, I don't really give a fuck when it comes to being like, a, uh, I don't know, crass in a comic sometimes. So, but it's different. It's different in a comment. It's different when you say it. It's more insufferable when a human says it out of their disgusting face into like a <laughs> Instagram live stream app. Yeah, it's a bit weird. The whole thing's really odd. But I'm just trying to embrace uh, new technology, I suppose. Like when Josh yeah. and I went to the Kinkos, I was like, "Fuck it, content." And Josh was like, "Yeah, content." So it's just fucking film. Take the tripod and the camera and just fucking film us going to a fucking thing. It's 
And it's con- hashtag content. Well, the kids these days, they're on their phones. They want content. How are we going to get them to read paper funny books? Uh, you know, we have to embrace new media. You know, I should be, we should be on like TikTok now, like doing a dance, like, you know. Yeah. I mean, this is what passes for entertainment these days, apparently. Just like, you know, people just, you know, doing like a, a poncy dance. And like, that's it. I mean, like million views. Like, yeah. Fucking hell. Uh- I will say, um, um, I think that's such a good, that's honestly such a good point though. It's all about selling books. Like we're uh, usually always drawing something when we're doing this. It's not like we're quitting everything to just be radio hosts. It's not like we're trying to be goddamn uh, uh, Howard Stern here. Really, like we're just uh, talking about it. Just feels, it just feels, um, I, don't, I don't know. It, ma- it makes me feel kind of strangely naked. Oh, it's completely exposed. I mean, it's just horrible. It's, you know, I get a bit nervous some weeks. Like, oh, God, I have to fucking do this now. Jesus. But, you know, one week I got two pages done. It's like, you know, fuck it. Like, if you can stay focused and, like, you know, just chat and get a bit of work done. You know, as Josh yeah. and I talk on the phone throughout the week, it's just like a phone call, really. It gets more natural. It's like, you know, I think it's getting easier as we go on. I, I agree. It, it used to feel so, uh, so much harder. I mean, I love... I love technology and embracing new technology. And honestly, I love my phone. And I'm, I'm going to have this print at Permanent Shift. <laughs> this is it's from it's a it's comic it's that's actually unreleased because I was going to put it in my last book that I didn't put out. But this is just a panel from it. I would never sell a panel isolated in a print of a comic that's already published, just so everybody knows. Because that's really trashy, lazy, and lame. This is something that's new. Never been published before. <laughs> It was all just calculated marketing, but yeah, you know, you're honest in what you just said. It is just uh, segues into calculated marketing. Yeah, and sometimes you, know, you wake up and you say, "Damn, I hate my life. Should I kill myself?" And there's a proof for that too. Permanent damage, December fourth, Sunday. Ah, uh, nice. So I was flashing back to a Darcy anecdote that I shouldn't tell. Anyway. Oh, well, don't bring it up now. Nobody no, will know no, it's one you will get is I'll get us kicked off. Yeah, I, I, I just, the, the, the YouTube terms and services just flashed across my eyes. I was like, oh, don't tell that story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, well, now you should just tell it in a censored kind of way. No, no. I'll, uh, I'll leave it. I'll just let people try to imagine what it was. And... <sighs> Yeah, we've got to we've got to transfer over to YouTube at some point and stop doing the, the phone thing. And, uh, don't know, but and Josh will have to figure that out. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how the technology works. Josh is a tech man. There's ways to do it. Uh, mm. uh, very, very stream uh, stream uh, programs with horrible logos of mm. birds that are green with weird shading and gradients. We'll find out what to do. But yeah, no, another one in the can, though. I guess that's, uh, you know, we've got like two minutes to go. So the Instagram timer is going to come on in a couple of minutes. So I think we've got three minutes. Uh, so plug them while you got them. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, I mean, we said it about 308 times. Go, go get an Ezestrada on at some point. I've just got this scene oh. uh, with the Nietzsche cartoon spirituality zine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time comics fans will know an Ezestrada. Yes. Alienation from Fanographics. But yeah, he's just got this new zine with all the writing. I think it's an older zine, but I just got it from uh, Domino from Austin English. He's a uh, Domino Books outfit. Um, he's always selling some good stuff. Yeah. Got these Dead Grimace Fardets, the, the Swedish uh, things. No. Oh, my gosh. The one with um, Kadri in it and uh, and you in it was, was insane. The really big one, it was number 40, I think. It's hardcover and it's blue. It has some really cool unpublished um, Nathan Cowdery cat strips. Yes, that, that was are a really one. crazy good. Like, they're really well written. Like, the one about the cum bucket in the jail cell, that's yeah. such a good two-pager. It's, like, really smart. Like, the comedy of it. Uh, this, one, this, it. Uh, this one's mostly young ladies, young uh, young Swedish uh, ladies, too. It's just a risograph and stuff. Some wow. quite nice stuff. I haven't read it yet, but it looks stylistically quite nice. Yeah. What's this guy's a Cynthia something? I think she did a uh, or Cecilia, Cecilia Varhead. She did a pin up for the Swedish uh, uh, Crisis on Calendar. And, wow. Yeah, she she's cool. She, um, did like an, she did an Elon Musk and Grimes uh, threesome scene with Ian the Bear. It was drawn in her style. But... Oh my gosh! Oh, that that's in the Yellow Werewolf Jones. Uh, I forget which which um, one. She said it just now. Which issue? 
that is. What's this? Aisha Franz in here. Got Joe Kessler cover. Got some Yako Palace Vuo. Oh, Anna Highfish there. Mm. Oh, so Anna Highfish piece about being cancelled. <laughs> was a badly judged joke, one I never meant to be offensive, and one I genuinely regret making. Deeply out of character. I'm going to embark <laughs> on an like, extensive yeah. educational journey to further my knowledge about the lived experience of the groups I upset. Uh, it's the oh. artist, yeah. It's <laughs> the artist. <laughs> Brilliant. She's, she's hilarious for that. That's great. Yeah, people can come to what? People can come to permanent damage this Sunday. That's the only plug I was going to say. Get the books here. We'll they can. Summer. Anna Highfish will be there. I don't know if she'll have any copies of the artists, but if you if you've not got a copy of the artist by Anna Highfish from Breakdown Press, you go track that down. I think I got this one. It sold out before I could get one. I got this on Book Depository for maybe seventeen dollars. I think. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely stuff on a high fish. Can't wait to hang out with her. It's going to be great. We're going to have a lovely time, aren't we? So, so excited, yeah. Comics, yeah. Blue outside, friends. blue skies. Yeah, I pray. I pray that it will be.